Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Roll Hit Die presents our Sunday night game of Kindred of Savannah, which may end up changing titles due to the fact they're no longer Savannah, so eh, we'll see what happens. Uh, before we jump into tonight's episode, uh, I am also, you know, live and not muted for my players asking those particular questions. Uh, we'd like to give a shout out to Roll20, which is what's in the middle of the screen here. We're showing our maps. We can show artwork, anything to immerse the players and keep our viewers you know, knowing what the heck's going on. Uh, also, none of them are out right now, or they are, they're at the top of the screen. We have miniatures that are created through Hero Forge. Hero Forge allows you to create custom minis, any posability with uh, outfits and weaponry or gear of any kind from, you know, fantasy version up to sci-fi. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to check them out, if you have a subscription with them, you can turn that digital, that copy into a digital version so you can use new digital games. We also have a um, sponsor, Gooey Cube. Gooey Cube is a 5th edition world um, of Xyathe, which was created by the company and over the last several years has been expanded upon by the community. So if you haven't had a chance to check them out, they've got a lot of good material that can be used to either run their campaign or run your own in their world. Just go to gooeycube.com and check it out. <clears throat> Sorry, a little congestion in the throat. Down below, uh, if you're watching us on Twitch, there is a link to Extra Life. Um, we have that set up year long so that when you can and when you wish to, you can give to the Children of Miracle Network. Just click that link. Don't care whose name you pick, just pick a name and you know donate away. Uh, also, down below, if you're watching us on Twitch, we have a right next to chat, looks like a little bubble. At least that's what Dragon Queen calls it. That little bubble, you click on it, the longer you watch any of our programs, allows you to collect points. Those points can be spent on Friday night, um, our Consequences of Chaos, because it is the 5th edition D&D game we're currently playing. We haven't created anything for Vampire nor Torg, but when we do, we'll be the first to know. Um, I think that's it. I don't have any further announcements beyond that. So, why don't we jump into tonight's episode of The Kindred from Savannah, or of Savannah. Kindred from Savannah. You, um, you, you sh we will have to uh, adjust our overlay, which I had noticed just now, and it's bad on me because I did not adjust it. Devin is no longer with us. Devin um, had um, had to go to Jacksonville. Yeah, that's that's what happened. Devin went to Jacksonville, and our new character that Marcus is currently running is name. Uh, her name is Kib. Is that correct? Proper pronunciation? Yes. Kib. 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 And uh, um, well, you know what? I think the best thing to do is to have. Judd, tell us what happened last session, since, you know, he was oh, the MVP oh. of the game. Okay, well, um, let's see. The game began, we were, uh, we were determined that we were going to make it out of town with Kristoff, and Kristoff gave us a time limit, and I had put um, Ezekiel and Devin into a storage bin. And, well, a storage room that I kept as kind of an alternative haven. I and think you're between storage bin and storage unit. I'm just going to throw that out unit. there. Storage unit. Storage <laughs> unit. Sorry, yes. Not a bin. Um, but anyway, in there. Um, after we talked to, um, after Igor and I talked to uh, Chris off about it, we went back to the bin, found out that Ezekiel had taken the stakes out of Devin, and had to convince both Devin and Ezekiel to let us stake them so that we could transport them across country because in their current condition, there was no way we could get them across country. So for their own safety, we were going to stake them. Ezekiel understood and allowed it. Uh, Devin eventually allowed it. Um, we got boxes for them, and um, Igor took Ezekiel's out uh, while <clears throat> Judd... Uh, took Devin's body and left it on top of an O'Reilly's uh, car, auto parts store and then told him that, you know, it's time for you to just meet the sun. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, well, there was a little bit more than just that. But then we left, um, I, I told uh, Igor and Kristoff that uh, Devin had just decided to go down to Jacksonville, Florida, and somehow... Um, they all believed me. So, eh, well, things happen. So, 
as far as everyone else knows, Tevin is off enjoying the uh, sights and sounds of Jacksonville, Florida. Um, we got on a plane with Christoph and went to Austin, Texas. We stayed at his new place and met one of his other associates. Um, he's uh, Eris Esriv. Esriv? Giv Esriv. Esriv. Um, and we uh, found out that we were going to be kind of running the bar and the new bar in town called Elysium. And we had to go and find uh, the people that were going to work there. I mean, all of this is completely new to uh, Jude because he's like, yeah, I've never held a job. So don't know what I'm looking for here. Uh, so he hired some people for the kitchen staff. Uh, <laughs> and hopefully whoever manages this place will, you know, be able to handle it from there. Um, from there, uh, that's about where we ended. All right, so you guys are currently there. And apparently I did not set things right, so give me a moment to fix that. Because Lord knows you guys are not currently watching me play my game. Hmm? It's yeah. it's set to the game that I was playing a, minute, a little bit ago. Oh, well, not a little bit ago, but a few days ago. Twenty seconds. Yeah, okay. We're on episode twenty-two, right? Yes. All right, that should be done. Uh, you can verify that. Yep. Yep. Correct. All right, so you guys are sitting in the bar. You've dealt with the um, new hires. You're sitting with Kiv, and I can't recall. There wasn't anybody really. It was a bunch of construction guys wor working the place. Yeah. All right. So what are you doing? I'm going to go into the office, make sure our rest of our uh, orders have a, will be arriving before our soft opening and get making sure the bars are set up and all that. Okay. What about the other two? Well, uh, Igor, uh, yeah. Have anything to do right now? No, not at all. Well, why don't we hit the streets and kind of see what this town's about? All right. As All right. you're as you're walking towards the door, a uh, young woman comes walking in. Um, excuse me. Are you hiring? Yeah. Looking up and down. Human, not. She's human. Um, give me a minute. I'll show you what she looks like. Uh, here we go. Well, we have been. Uh, you missed the initial interviews. I just I didn't realize you were hiring. I just came to town like a day or so ago, mm -hmm. and I've um, been riding up and down, checking the newspaper, and I just happened to see that you had a grand opening coming up in about a week or so, and I just thought I'd see if you. Had position. I mean, I've, I've, um, I've done bar work before, in a way. Well, uh, uh, where are you? Here. Well, why don't we go let you talk to uh, the manager, and we'll go from there. So, taking well, her back to Steve's office. Uh, on the way back, I'll ask out. So, where'd you come from? Uh, Georgia. Uh, Atlanta area? Gotcha. Uh, I want to know if she's lying, if I believe her. Insight wits? Yes. She needs to be an insight wits. And I need to actually... Georgia, huh? A day or so ago, huh? Uh, 
hey, that could have ended really bad, I just realized. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot I was a little hungry. So, um, yes and no. You're picking up that the Georgia came off the top of her head, but, I mean, the Georgia came out pretty easily, but the name of the city did not come out easily. Judd. Judd doesn't care, so that's why I'm not rolling the uh, inside check. Okay. So Judd doesn't care. Copy that. Yeah, Judd's like, hey, yeah, I'm going to leave this person over here, because this has already been a confusing night for me. Atlanta, huh? So what you do in Atlanta? Um, I worked at a... Never heard of an uh. Yeah, I know. It's, What's, uh, this, this, is, this is the DM trying to bring it up. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I worked at Tilt a Kilt. It's a, kind of like an Irish type bar slash novelty, whatever you want to call it, in, uh, in Atlanta. Oh, Alright. Uh, open my phone, type that in Atlanta, Georgia. Go ahead and you can use your Google if you want to to see what it is, but... Well, is there one in Atlanta? There is. Up off of, I want to say, Cobb Parkway, maybe. Oh, okay. Never mind then. There used yeah. to be a lot more. Yeah, well, I mean, I know of at least one. I've driven by it before, so... Alright. Seems like there's several of them around. But I'm sure the paperwork will be fine. Yeah, go ahead and take her to Keeve. Yeah. All right, so Keeve is sitting there doing whatever she's doing in the office, and you get a knock on the door from these two gentlemen. Come in. Hi, uh, there was one more person that wanted to uh, see if they, there was a job. Uh, oh, yes, we're always hiring. Uh, I show her in. Come have a seat. Uh, yeah, Kip, can I have a word with you for a second before uh, you get too busy with her? All sure. the interviewing and everything. Sure, have a seat. Uh, just watch out for her. I'll step on that. Jude will stay in here with her and say, uh, so what brought you here to Austin? Uh, just ran into some issues back home and uh, my daughter and I moved out this way. I see. I see. Um, <laughs> Kurt's like, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I saw the picture. The second I saw the picture, I kind of knew. Um, well, I mean, I can understand that. Um, yeah, I didn't see a picture on my end, that's why. Yeah. Uh, hmm. no, 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 I can understand that. It, you know, when there's trouble, you just sometimes need a fresh start. Yeah, it was, you know, issues with an ex-husband. So, it just my daughter and I needed to move out. You know, get someplace new and start over kind of deal. Well, hopefully he doesn't follow you over here and uh, uh, no, I mean, cause any more trouble. He died and it was just all the memories and, and stuff that went around that, yeah. Ah, I understand. Okay. Well, you know, good luck. And I definitely recognize her because I actually did see her. Yes, I, well, that's why I was going to have you roll some sort of thing early. And you're like, I don't care. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. But now, now, once she said that, it's like, oh, oh, I'm putting two pieces together. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, I'm sure we can, you know, find a place for you here. I appreciate it. I definitely need to start over and... And um, uh, she seems to be somewhat lost in... Con uh, thought um I, and I'm just going to wait for them to come back alright two of you so yeah I would take uh, Kiv a little ways away into a somewhat secluded area away from ears yes <laughs> seems to be the trouble so uh that gal just walked in yes you know she her said, she seemed a little fishy she said she's from Georgia. That came out easy enough. Atlanta, less so. I think she's lying about something. 
and she just came in and she just left a couple days ago. She just got in yesterday or today, whichever. And I'm not feeling too comfortable with anybody who's from Georgia or Savannah just showing up here of all places. Well, well she doesn't seem to be. In oh, Virginia. Jesus, Marcus. What? <laughs> you leave back in a soldier wearing. <laughs> Oh, my shirt? Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sorry, well, back to the game. Back to the game. <laughs> I'm not 100% comfortable if they're just, you know, showing up from Georgia after everything that had happened with, you know, boss and everyone and everything there. Do you think uh, she's part of SI and Paula Jola? I mean, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I just don't like the, you know. It wasn't necessarily true when she said, you know, she's from Atlanta. That kind of, she had to think about where she was coming from. Okay. And just to be on the, err on the side of caution. Um, I, I don't know about you. I can't. Uh, but can you do any, you know, uh, mind fuckery to mortals? Um, depends on what you mean by mind fuckery? Uh, get information out of them. Um, since it's taking so much time, I'm texting Igor. And she's nervous. Okay. You know, twitching, rubbing her hands, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm just texting Igor and just putting in, um... JT's wife. Yeah, no, we should definitely, uh, my phone goes off and I get that. Um, loose end. Could bring, uh, yeah, yeah, this, uh, looking around real, making sure no one's around, no one's listening at all. Um, so the guy that made us have to leave, mm -hmm. this is a relation to it somehow. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's like close relations, so it's probably not good. I mean, they could have been followed here. Uh, and, and if they left and they came here, that's... Okay. Well, I will take the resume. It, well, this could bring unwanted attention to the doorstep that we just got to, just by her being here. Okay. Now, are you wanting to go take her out back and... Get rid of her, or are you... Well, no. I'm just saying maybe uh, listen to her and then tell her to fuck off to, you know, the other side of town. Okay. Um, he goes like, know. fuck this. No, 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 no. Nothing. No connection. Get her out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it sucks. Yeah, you had to leave town. You know, everything's bad. I don't give a fuck. You're bringing trouble to my doorstep. <laughs> Um, I, and I'm just telling her after, you know, looking at my phones, having texted, um, uh, they're having a problem with the beer delivery, so, sorry, it's going to take them a few minutes. Well, who they got delivering it? No, no, it's about a delivery for tomorrow. There's something that, uh, seems to have held it up. I and, mean, uh, that's their part of the business. I was just trying to find out why it was taking them so long. And I'll uh, simply end it with a pat on your back. And uh, I don't think Kristoff would want any loose end showing up or any connections in any way arriving on his doorstep and sticking around. Oh, very well. I will speak with the young lady. And uh, if Kristoff calls and after that, the uh, three of us can get together and decide what needs to be done. I know that uh, there's also a daughter probably sticking around somewhere as mm -hmm. well. But then we didn't want to uh, take care of the mother without taking care of the daughter. That's not something I do. I'm saying, you know... We can't really get rid of the mother without killing the daughter, too. I mean, come on. We gotta, yeah. get, we gotta make sure they're together. <laughs> we don't need to get ourselves a chopping block. I'm just saying send them to the other side of town. Okay. Does he... 
somewhere he's not connected. No, Kristoff has feelers in just about everything. Um, I might know some folks that, that I can get her set up with. As um, long as they're not connected to us, that's all I'm happy with. Well, you're connected to Crystal. Crystal's connected to me. I'm connected to this person. Do you know that actor Kevin Bacon? <laughs> no, I never really did watch movies. <laughs> okay. Six degrees well, of there's... separation. Yeah, I mean, the last person who got themselves... Uh, oh, and, you know, and on a side note... The two, the right new, off into the sunset. You guys are all one connection away from that, by the way. Yay! <laughs> I've worked with him on two shows. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So, it's sort of like that with Kristoff and all that. There's, the, you know, when a town explodes and a person shows up in another town, it might bring prying eyes. Well, he all showed up in another town after a town blew up. So you think we'd be bringing Brian? <laughs> I was never seen. I was uh, not in the open. Uh, I know I, I don't I'm, exist. I'm That's sensing. The thing with me. I'm sensing a little bit of paranoia there, Igor. Just, just, just the, saying. Yeah, no. The thing is, with me, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't exist. That's fine. This person exists and has a child and was seen most likely at a scene of a crime. Okay. In fact, I don't know if it'd be good to even let them leave here. Maybe if we, uh... No, so you want... No chopping block, but, you know... We have construction workers left and right. They see her come in. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. wipe the minds of people. I see the future. I... <laughs> do blood ritual. Oh, I good. See what happens... Things. Yeah, what happens if we hire her and what happens if we don't? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just giving you shit. Go, deal with that. I uh, will get a little bit of a shove. <laughs> do I will grasp your hands and okay, then you apparently it's free or one rouse check. Um, I think it's a rouse check to do it against a vampire, but maybe free to do it against a more uh, normal or an ord or whatever you want to call them. Uh, what is the ability? Uh, premonition. Premonition. What's it under? Uh, Auspex. Auspex. That's dominating. Alright, premonition. Uh, it is free or one blood uh, to activate. So yeah, I believe that's against the Oh, I want to provoke one, so, yeah. I can have random premonitions at stories to tell this progression. If I want to push a premonition, I have to do a rouse check. So I'll do that. Looks like you're successful with your rouse. Uh, oh, that's uh, nice. Then, let's see here. It's resolve plus aspect. Resolve. Right. Plus two. Alright, uh, two success. What kind of permissions would I get off of him and her? Well, I mean, you're not in the same room with her, so and with a two success, you're getting a permission off of only Igor's future. But not yes. that far in the future. Um, let's see. After this, planning on going out with Jude and doing a little bit of around town, maybe a little bit of, uh, you see, something to drink. You, you see him get in a fight in an alleyway. Alrighty. Um, does he look like he's losing the fight or... Oh, oh no, it, it definitely looked like the aggressor in the fight. Okay. Um, the only one I 
foresee causing issues, uh, apparently you're going to go kick someone's ass in the alley? Yeah, probably. Why is that? Uh, I'm just a little peckish. I have food in my cold fridge here in the office if you ever need any. Oh, uh, I'm fine for right now. I'm just a little peckish right now. I don't need to be, you know, wasting anything. Well, you're... And my style tends to be a little, you know, different. Oh. Okay. Well, if you like, um, uh, let me wrap up with her, and, uh, if I sent out the email, then I'll go show you all around town. Sounds like a plan. Okay. I'll walk in, and I'll reach out my hand to her. I apologize. You are... Uh, Gloria. I, I'm leaving. Okay. Hello, Gloria. I'm here. Uh, I understand you're looking for a job. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Yes, I am. I, I just like some new in town, and I saw that you were hiring. I thought I'd come in at least set up an appointment or give, you know, fill out an application or something. Okay, yes. Uh, if you want, go ahead and fill this out. I have to run across town to get um, to our contractor here, which mix up in our paint job. Uh, so if you don't mind, take this with you and have a seat out at the bar, fill it out with your name, address, phone number, and I will give you a call. Uh, but it is nice to meet you. I apologize. We had our open session about an hour ago, but I will definitely give you a call. And if I can't find you something here, I am sure I can find you something in town. Um, you know, us girls have to stick together. Okay. And she reaches out and shakes her hand. Yep, I was waiting for it. Ooh. Yeah, there's something about her that just, hmm, a scent off of her, maybe, you know, of certain, but you still need to do the, uh, yeah, ability. Five. Uh, plus two. Uh, so, no. do you want to go any better with that, or is that where you want to stay? Uh, let's see. It's two wheel. There we go. All right. So, three. You get a flash of her filling out the application on the bar, then somebody coming in with a, a dolly full of bottles. Mm -hmm. um, she has a nice, pleasant conversation with them. Directs them where to place the uh, um, the the merchandise and what she has with them. Uh, tells him that she doesn't actually work here, but uh, that would be the best place that's safe and out of sight. Um, and before she leaves, after filling out the application, she actually puts uh, arranges the bottles that came in on the order up on the bar okay. behind the bar in you know easy view labels out uh, the good stuff up top the Cheap stuff okay. on the bottom, easy reach for the bartenders. Um, so she would be an asset. Uh, from the vision you just saw, um, she does seem to know her way around working uh, an establishment like this. Uh, she's cordial with the guy. Um, you know, one of the construction guys walked by her and you know, kind of gives a little cat call, and she just kind of chuckles and turns and walks away. And then she, you know, she leaves without an issue. She lays the uh, application neatly next to the register. That way you could find it because you didn't tell her exactly where to put it. Um, and and leaves without a problem, according to your vision, of course. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll say that in the immediate future, you're not picking up anything other than that. Okay. You do. There is a dark cloud over her. Like, there's something mm -hmm. that's um, emotionally bothering her, but you're not able to really pick up too much on it with what you roll. 
Okay. Alright. Uh, one other thing. When you looked over the character sheet, did you see what the oculate artifact was? And were you good with that? Okay, where are we at? You talking about Kiev? Yes. Give me a second to double check that so I know what you're talking about. You said, what was it? On? It's on advantages. Oh, there Oculus you go. Artifact, or occult artifacts. I don't know what says Oculus. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, what's, what's, what's Oculus? What's Oculus? Okay. It's a monocle that helps me see the unseen, basically. Yep, all right. I didn't know if that was... Um, you, you have to put it on. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking, you put it on to kind of like, you look like you're reading something. Yes. Glance in her direction, maybe around the room. You're not picking up oh. anything. Well, I didn't mean for right now. I'm just saying in the future. If uh, that artifact was okay with you. That's fine. Okay. Just so when it pops out. I'm lying or not. Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, right. But she shakes your hand, says thank you for this mm -hmm. opportunity, uh, however it turns out. And do, do you want me to leave this by the register? It's easy for you to see if I leave it there. Yeah, that's fine. That's perfect. Um, I need to actually head out. I will kind of like walk her to the door, and as she steps out, my office, I'm going to go to my little mini fridge on the desk and grab me a Capri Sun, put it in my pocket. Well, she doesn't, when you escort her out of the office, she doesn't turn around and look back to see what you're doing. She walks straight to the bar, sits down, crosses her leg, and starts filling out the application. Mm. But you do notice something when you come walking out. She's okay. pulled out another piece of paper and has it laying next to the, uh, the, application and it looks like she's reading from the paper and putting it on the application hmm. okay. I will walk by the bar grab a solo cup kind of make her it's like would you like a coke or anything when you fill that out um I mean I'll take a, a sparkling water I suppose if you've got it yeah, I've got some club soda that'll work Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So I fill up a red solo cup, sparking that, and sit next to her. I'm, ch I'm taking it you're checking something else out, too, aren't you? Yeah, just a quick glance at the paper. Not showing too much concern about it, especially after what Kurt told me. Or Igor. All right, I just sent you the uh, one thing that catches your eye. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Gloria. And and when you say that, it's almost as if she didn't really catch that you called her Gloria. Oh, oh, yes. Thank you, thank you. And she right. goes back to filling the paperwork. Okay. All right. Uh, and I'll head over to the guys, wherever they are. Gentlemen? Waiting. All ready? Uh, yeah. probably outside, uh, but at this point it's like, oh, we're, we're gonna wait. Yeah, we're gonna wait. Uh, well, right. did y'all wanna, <clears throat> if you felt like walking. Give me a wits and uh, awareness, yeah. Igor. Yeah, this was before she came out. This was like, uh oh. Wits awareness, my yeah. best attributes. Yes. Hey, thirty. <laughs> yeah, you remember the young kid that smelled a pot earlier? Yeah. You catch a glimpse of him being shoved into an alleyway. Hey, guess where I'm going? <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> and I'm following along. So this is about to get real fun in a hurry. As you fail and have three hunger now. Yeah, it's real. It's real fun in a hurry. 
So, uh, yeah, you come around the corner, and yes, there seems to be three guys in the alleyway. Cool. Um, two of them are holding the young man against the wall, as the third one is punching him in the stomach. Oh, perfect. Uh, let's go for the kidneys on the closest one. And this is going to be so bad. Um, actually, I'm going... As he is about to start, I'm also going to say something, but... Go ahead. Uh, oh. Yeah, um, go. He's going to be, he's going to be hitting before I can hit Valerity. He's going to move before I can say anything. Um, gentlemen, you should notice the cameras before doing something this stupid. <laughs> the only thing you get so, from the guy throwing the punches, maybe offhanded before he gets hit, is none of your damn business. Fuck off as you do whatever you're about to do. So seven successes Jesus. on punching that dude right square in the kidneys. Yes. Um, so, um, yeah, you don't literally punch him in the kidney. You've grabbed a hold of his kidney. Mm, perfect. You hit hard enough with a bestial failure that you didn't stop at the skin. You've actually ruptured uh, his side, or the small of his, you know, right where the kidneys are located, and your hand is part way in his back. And you're you're, li you're literally you're literally is... tickling the, uh, the the kidneys at this point in time. It's fine. Uncanny grip is not going to be in use right now. I'm not taking it with me. All right. And uh, um, that's the first guy, and I'm going to look at them and say, you're attacking somebody who works. Let me rephrase this. For me. Because I made the mistake again. Uh, that's your choice if you want to puncture or not, because bestial players only count for failures, and yours was not a failure. Rupturing is fine. Puncturing the skin, no. Okay. Internal bleeding, not a problem. All right, we'll say you hit hard enough that you, the kidney exploded inside. Because, <laughs> you alright, Marcus? <laughs> you alright, Marcus? We don't want her here because we don't want attention brought to our place. Why a uh, exploded kidney? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm just defending somebody who works for us now. So, um, yeah, well, I mean, you have a seven out of, uh, against a human. Yeah, not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> seven out of not a lot. Yeah, seven against a human. I'm going to ask this before we go any further. Did you want to use a willpower? <laughs> no, no. Okay. No. Um, no, even a low roll is still aggravated damage to humans. I mean, you rolled two tens. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you um, definitely, uh, the kidney explode. Uh, yeah, the guy I the rest of them, hey. crumples to the ground, holding his side and screaming like a, you know what. Go ahead. You know. You're attacking somebody who works for us. It's best you leave. So he's thrown down on the ground because he can't breathe. And I'm referring to the young kid. As the two of them pull out pistols. Look, it's none of your business. I mean, he owed the boss money. We're just here to collect. Just move on. There's two of us. There's only one of you. And I walk up behind one of them. All right. And since their attention is distracted, I'm going to punch him. Actually, no. I'm going to grapple him. I'm just going to grab him. All right, go for it. And I'm going to look at uh, the kid we just hired and tell him to get out of here. Takes him a moment to get his breath as Jude is doing the grapple. Oh, and then I'm going after the second guy. So if they want to do anything before I go after the second guy. Because I'm grappling the second guy, which gives me... Well, uh, Jude's got the first, uh, the second guy. Uh, Jude's got one of the guys. Yeah. And he comes and up behind him and grapples him. And that's when you can move, see if you can do it. Which I'm pretty certain with your... And I'm grappling, so I can only add five dice. So I'm going to roll another. For grapple. It doesn't matter. Five successes. Mm, one of you better? Mm, why not? Let's see what happens. 
three more. Eight. So that's eight successes? Um, well, it's not three more because you don't have another ten. Uh, no, it's thing. a ten, a six, and an eight. Oh, I see. A six yeah. is a success. Six, 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 two. So, three more successes. So you've got an eight. Um, yeah, so how do you grapple them? I mean, you definitely did a very fine job. There is some damage in the process, so... Yeah, but, I grab his wrist, push the gun up, and, uh, yeah, this guy probably gets slammed to the ground pretty well hard enough, and then I look and see if the other kid's fucked off or not, or if he's still standing there. Because The other I kid looking... is being held by, um, Jude. A uh, stoner kid. Stoner kid, once he's able to get some of his breath, he starts crawling down the alleyway. As he's crawling down the alleyway, Kiv comes around the corner, and this is what she sees. Nom. Um, yeah, because if that kid's uh, not looking this way, the other guy's taking care of, I'm uh, feeding off this guy. I mean, just like, <laughs> and over with. you recognize the scene because you just witnessed it a few moments ago. Done and over with real quick in a hurry. I take two points, and uh, I will pick up our stoner boy. And walk them toward back towards the front of my vehicle. Uh, you okay? I see there's a <laughs> scuffle and uh, <coughs> security had to. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's I, he's trying to get his breath back. To what? He's trying to get his breath back. That was him okay. doing that, not me. <laughs> Take you to the hospital. No, it's just a just a gut punch. Um, they didn't get any further than that before. Uh, uh, what's his face came in and stopped it. Okay. Well, I don't like my employees getting attacked. Would you like to tell me what this was about? A few days ago, I bought something from him. And he says I shorted him, and I didn't. I paid him everything was, it was owed. He was just trying to extort more money out of me because I, I don't know. And who did you buy this from? Uh, um, Knuckles. He was the guy that was punching me. Alrighty. Sorry, I... I, I, I I'm a recreational pot smoker. And uh, he was selling some down near where I lived at the time, and I figured it would hurt. Well, we don't do drug tests, so what you do on your own time is fine. Um, but I do not appreciate my staff being assaulted, so you said it was Knuckles? Uh, yes, ma'am, uh, Knuckles. And uh, when you said my staff being assaulted, he kind of lightened up a little bit because up until now, nobody told him he was hired. <laughs> yes. Um, I have a seat in the back of my SUV, and I'll be right with you. And I will come back around. Yeah, uh, you come back around the corner. I'm certain by now... Igor's done feeding on the one guy that had the gun. Oh, it was done in seconds. It, Judd and is kind of holding. Feed that's just well, no, no, no. Judd, Judd was holding this guy and said, "You made the wrong life decisions." Oh man! <laughs> What's snap? Oh, <laughs> and uh, the body, the the, the uh, and gentleman that Judd was cur uh, was holding. Uh, you see the final part of the snap as the limp body hits the ground. Uh, and then, of course, there's a guy on the ground who's grabbing his side and definitely in a lot of pain. He's not going to survive. He's trying, and he's crawled, he's say, crawled part way behind a vehicle that was parked there. Yeah, I was going to say, I licked the wound and then grabbed him by the ankle and, uh, no, 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 leave him, leave him. Put that guy out of his misery. And remember, we're not he's, supposed to, not near the car, not near the Near the club. Well, you, uh, they simply attacked our employees. There is no reason that we need to go any further. We're defending them. I, and I'll take care of you. 
Okay, okay. Um, so before you well, finish them off, I would like some information. Apparently, our drug addict drug. bought some stuff. I forgot what his name was already. Okay, I'm going to go look well, it up. I don't know who the fuck his name is. I, I'd have to look at notes. <laughs> it's just like, what? hey, I, I like that kid. Um, uh, but no, uh, the question is, uh, I didn't kill the guy I was uh, eat, feeding off of. And um, you obviously killed the son of a bitch. Yeah, uh, his name is Edward. Edward uh, Newman. And then we have the guy whose kidneys exploded. Which you don't yeah, know. I mean, he's going to die. And I'm he's not I, going to survive this. And that's when you say, like... Yeah, he's you know, probably just puking up off. blood and something right now as he's crawling away. Yeah, I toss him over to Jude. Because I have no reason to kill this guy. You know? I I have, like... He was fucking with somebody. I punched him. Shit happens. If Jude wants to kill this guy, Jude can kill this guy. I um, just would Jude. like to know who sent them. Apparently there's a guy named Knuckles. Uh, what was... Who's Knuckles? I don't know. Eddie was saying he bought some stuff off of somebody and they're trying to extort him. Uh, did he say what Knuckles looked like, who Knuckles was, what they were doing? Uh, I assume it was one of these. How do we... Okay. Um, before Jude finishes off the guy whose kidneys has exploded. Who's Knuckles? I grab his hair, pull it back. Who's Knuckles? Which he's, one's Knuckles? You see, he's, obvious, knuckles? he's obviously in pain. He got blood around his mouth. Uh, who? Who? I don't. I don't know any uh, <laughs> Knuckles. Oh, I think you. Uh, oh, I don't think I'm dying. Uh, well, dude. So, uh, do you want me to just finish him off? Uh, you're the one that wants to. Well. We can't leave this behind. I don't feel like, you know... <sighs> this is time... And I'm leaning over the guy. This is time for your confession. Making your... I need a hospital. Call right. an ambulance or something. I mean, oh man, I'm dying here. Oh, what did you hit me with? Am I shot? He's like he's trying to feel for blood. I, I'm holding his head, and I'm just going to go... I just kind of look away as if you're about to snap his neck. Um, yeah. Marcus, what happened? You still there? Yeah, Marcus got up and walked away. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm then going to, on the two that are dead, blood, nice little cross. I did the two rouse checks, and I am disintegrating their bodies. I am rolling all three of them for cash weapons and fun stuff. Yeah. And he might find that very interesting, that I am decomposing their bodies rapidly. <laughs> but yeah, I am rolling them for cash, drugs, uh, weapons. Uh, two of them have pistols. Did we get info off of them? Well, there's um, one still alive. I mean, I I fed on the one that was beating on him pretty hard. Uh, well, no. I, I point at the ground, the guy that's you know, was bleeding from the kidneys. I... That was the one that was beating on it pretty hard, and then I fed on that one that's still there, and that, never mind, that one's gone. Neither. Um, the one that is, that got fed on but is still alive, I'm going to slap him awake. Yeah, I licked the wound, he's just, you know, it was okay. only two that I sated, so, and if he needs to make a roll. for cameras around this area? It's an alleyway, and there are. Uh, you can give me a investigation of awareness. No, wits investigation. I mean, if you mention cameras, uh, let's go ahead and see what happens. Because I would have also been looking. One. And I'm going to spend. Yeah, my investigation is zero. My wits is what is uh, the three. So. so it was just one success. Um. Kiv, Kiv knows that the, the club has not put any out here yet, but she doesn't see any that are from anybody else, like street cams. Far enough off, uh, Jude would notice the same thing. Yeah. So you're certain 
where you're at, and that might have been the reason why they pulled him into the alley to rough him up. Yeah. So, the one guy that's still alive, I'm slapping him away. <sighs> and I'm just... Uh, 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 are you, hey, uh, you knuckles. Who is knuckles? Looks at the guy that's writhing on the ground in complete pain and agony. Oh, no, no. He's dead and he's decomposed at this point. Yeah, there's clothing there. Oh. There's clothing there. Uh, Knuckles? That he was just here? Who? Which one was Knuckles? They both ran off. Well, I mean, they call him Knuckles because he's the enforcer and he uses his fist. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Enforcer um, for who? Ma'am? Um, I, if I, no, no, I can't tell you that. You saw what I did to Knuckles. Do you Still pull on her dagger. That she has in her boot. And bring it up to his... Right above his eye or something. I mean, that works too. And, and I'm just going to say, your friends made bad life decisions. As I'm rolling their bodies. This is a chance for you to make a good life A second. And I'm just going to intimidate. Oh yeah, no problem. I'm just trying to bring something up right quick that will help me out with what I'm doing. I, I took the two pistols already. They were obviously there. And I'm not good at intimidation. Idi na hui yumri. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, if he's that scared, he completely changed languages. Uh, yeah, it doesn't give me the option to change the name. I just, I can't read what it ended up being. Um, but that is what was said in a foreign language before he spit on the ground. Uh, did I recognize the foreign language? You do well, know that's... someone who speaks with a bit of an accent as well. It may be something similar. A bartender, French? bartender, uh, not a bartender, a bouncer that you know. Oh, okay. And I'm sure my accent just now really was screwed up, so it didn't matter. Okay, okay. It, it simply came from him. Hmm. You've heard it, 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 inflections, and when you're talking to Rustav, it sounds similar to the language you just heard. Oh, okay, gotcha. Did he um, spit at toward Keeve? He just spit on the ground. He just spit on the ground. Okay. Between um, Keeve and himself. One last attempt. Uh, here, let me, uh, and I will punch the gr the wall right next to his head, pushing my hand into the wall with no, uncanny no. grip. You know. No, what are you doing? Actually, actually. <laughs> and you're worried about the girl in the other room. <laughs> All right, so yes. Punch the wall right next to his head, you know, fist goes into the wall. We just fixed that wall last week. This is a an alley across the street. Shit's fine. Fuck off. Um, is it? I don't know. Uh, uh, but give me a percentage head. roll. We'll find out. But that will be your head if you do not speak. Uh, Kurt, give me a. Tell us. Kurt, give me a percentage roll. All right. Uh, so. Is he intimidated with me putting a hole in the wall right next to his head? Well, give me an intimidation check. Uh, do I get any bonuses, I mean? Uh, I'll let you have an extra dice. Two dice. Okay, that, that helps. Hey, <laughs> two. <laughs> that's, a, that's a success. Messy critical. A, Good yeah. end. critical. Hey, well, the thing is, if it's a failure, I didn't put a hole in the wall next to his head. No, it's a it's a messy critical. But you, did you give me a percentage dice to find out what wall you actually stuck your hand into? Uh, D100. 77. Yep, it's the club's wall. You're welcome. <laughs> but with a messy critical, you hit it so hard that pieces of brick fly off the wall next to his head and embed from the back of his ear up to the side of his face, almost like a shotgun blast. I do still have potents going, so yes. Um, when you do that, all you hear, 
All you hear him say is, uh, let me see if I actually give me a proper pronunciation so I don't screw it up. Vladik. 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 No, not Vlad. Vladik. Vladik. <laughs> All right, we good? I look at them. Uh, hold on. Do I know who Vladik is with my streetwise and... Give me a streetwise check. You have been yeah, here for a little bit. With... Yeah, streetwise and what? Intelligence. I mean, I would say I'd try and make a roll, but I'm new here, so my streetwise doesn't make The only one it would matter what? would be... Right. And is that the best you wish to stick with? You want to try for the... I guess it's the best mm. you're getting. Uh, good enough. You've heard something about a person who runs a criminal organization here in town that might go by that name. Um, mm. About the best you're going to get with the two. Okay. Um, where can we find this blood? Uh, let's see. And you still have your dagger under their neck? I will move closer, but instead of the dagger at the throat, I will have the dagger at his nads. It's meant to tend to be a little more forthcoming when their manhood's at risk. Now I'll kind of lean in. So. Okay, so he leans forward and starts to mumble? Mm-hmm. You lean forward too? Uh, I'm yeah. still right there in his face. Yeah. And as soon as you get close enough to hear if you're saying anything, he slams his head back against the wall as hard as he can. All right. And then I feed off him too. Very well. Plus one more because it only lets me add so many. So. I will get rid of his body. That's <laughs> 10 successes. <laughs> Out of 12 dice, that's 10 successes. Okay. I slate my one hunger that I did have. All right, let me go ahead and get rid of this because I have... probably pushing your knife into his nads in the process. I don't intend to kill the guy. If that matters, I do not intend to kill him. You I can... just intend to feed off him. Um, you can kill or he'll be dead. He slammed. <laughs> exactly. He... I'm not killing people. Yep. You can tell that he slammed his head as hard uh, hard enough against the brick wall that he fractured the back of his skull. As if with, telling you where to find Vadik was worse than actually dying. Yeah. Okay. Very well. And now you've seen me feed twice. But I, again, I don't kill this guy. I just take one. Yeah. Uh, roll the body, same as others. Same as the other two that were there. Take cash, drugs, whatever they had. Um, okay, so with that, I'm going to say... And I'm sure, Jude, if you're saying he's going to die, you snap. You find $700 yeah. on the one that was pointed out to being Knuckles. All right, 700 on Knuckles. And um, maybe 10 bucks between the two other guys. Okay. You do find there. three... Mm, well, two 9 millimeters okay. and a 45. The 45 was off of uh, Knuckles. You also find a set of car keys. And um, you are next to a car. All right. Hey, we got ourselves a car, my guys. <sighs> Shit, this is going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, so... Do you mind if, uh, do we have a driver that could take this back somewhere? Like the apartments, maybe? Uh, I'm, I'm going to be looking for some people in town. I could use a ride for a little bit before I ditch it. Keith? Yes. Um, well, I do have Edward in the back of my SUV. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of him taking it because he just 
got done dealing with these people, and if they pull him over or find him with this car, it's going to be extremely bad for him. Alright, so I'm going to show you a picture. Let me see if I can drag it over to a handout for you. Yeah, this one, the clothing is going to go to one of those clothing bins that people leave out outside charity places. I mean, yeah, hey, we could just take this if you want. That way your car doesn't have to get all dirtied up with whatever is going go. on. I really don't want to get rid of this car now, <laughs> but I'm probably going to. But hey, it'll why? be worth some money. We'll why we'll paint it, get rid of the license plate, file off the VIN. Hey, I'm, I'm a paranoid a fuck. <laughs> hey, look, I've learned a few things. Uh, you know, if I can find the right people, it's not hard to pull a window, pop a VIN, put a new one on, matches the color, get a tag. Why? Real easy. Do all that. I'll open up the glove box, see if there's a title. No, there's no title in the glove box. People keep Is titles it? in glove boxes? Actually, you know what? Give me a percentage roll. Anyway. Give me a percentage roll. We'll see how stupid Knuckles really was. What'd you roll? 60. Uh... No, there is does not seem to be a title in the glove box. There is uh, what is the registration? It? There is the registration. There is the insurance. Um, the insurance is. Let me give you the name. It's on the actual. Oh, the, yeah, the name that's listed in the insurance. Mm. As soon as I find it, uh, Jackson, no, no, Nico, Nico Hamilton. Nico Hamilton. Okay. Well, and there you go. We can take it back and have proper documents put up on it and have it registered into your name that it, that's your car, and I can write up a bill of sale, and this Nico Hamilton sold it to you. Uh, that might be a good idea, but at the same time, I'm looking for some people in town that might be into this shady shit, and hopefully this Vatic isn't, you know, a ringleader of a massive crime organization. Okay. Um, um, why don't we go to hide the park somewhere for right now. I was thinking of going back to the apartments. Okay. Since we have a place to live there and then we can all travel from there. Uh, bring Edward with you, if you will. We'll do. He and I need to have a little chat. Good, good. I'd like to talk to him as well. So if you just meet us over by the apartment. Um, we'll do. Then I'll ride with you over to the apartment. Yep. Alright, so... Uh, I'll check the trunk, check the back seat, glove box, all the okay, um, little hidey holes for anything yeah, in this car. The trunk has. You recognize this as a kind of a kit you would have kept in your vehicle at one point in time. Okay. It's got the shovel, got the rope, even a bag of lye laying to the side. Um, there is a small duffel bag that's got a sawed off shotgun in it. Um, some more ammo, some ammo for like the pistol, the, the 45, not the 9mm, and some right uh, shotgun ammo. Uh, handcuffs. And um, hmm, you find brass knuckles. Hey, I got a second pair of brass knuckles now. And hey, I just refilled basically everything I lost back in. And there's, a fuel, <laughs> there's also a fuel can that apparently has some fuel or something in it. Uh, but before you get in the car, Kiev's going to stop you. Um, I need you to go talk to the, uh, foreman that's doing the renovations. Yeah, of course. And see how much it's going to cost you to fix my hole. I mean, it's simple. Just get some brick and mortar and plaster. It's not that hard. 
Can you do it? Not great, but service. I can. Just a little bit of rattle can, call it a day. I mean, any more, really. You just slap shit on a wall, and then you find one of those, uh, you know, up-and-coming artists. This and the, wall that you put uh, a look, hole in. Look, but here's the thing. Look. In Austin, you find one of them up-and-coming artists, and you pay them to spray-paint a mural on the side of the wall, cover up the mistakes. It's fine. There, there, there's an entire brick missing. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the brick exploded into the side of the guy's face. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'll go tell we... I'll go ask the construction people. All right. So you walking around back to the front? Yeah. Come back around the front, and uh, Gloria is standing beside an S the SUV talking to the young man inside. Uh, she's actually okay. got, like, a, a napkin or something, and she's wiping the blood off the side of his head and just, you know, talking cordially with him, making sure he's okay. I'm going to try to get their attention go, come on. Sometimes that's but I'll walk around. And I'm going to go in and grab the foreman. Yeah, it does take long. You find the, the guy who's barking orders. Uh, what's, what, what's up? What's, what, yeah, what are we going to do oh, for you? Need to show you some damage outside. Um, I just finished outside like last week. Uh, what the right. hell could have happened already? Some idiot did something. Oh, shit. Don't know what. Just want to know how much it's going to cost to repair it. Well, that, fuck it. Show me. I mean, I mean, it is getting late. I was about to send the guys home, but show me. No, no, no. You don't have to do it tonight. Just here. All right. Fucking hate working on damn nightclubs. They always want you to work on their hours. And he follows you out. Yeah, I'm probably going through the car at this point. And I will... Go up to Gloria and... The inside of the car, yeah. other than the trunk, is pristinely clean. Alright. As if he takes real good care of this car. Uh, do you... Do anything else you want to check with it? I am simply, you know, trunk, glove box, back seat, under the seats, you know, looking for any hidey holes, but... Uh, you do find a hidey hole that a pistol can go in that is not easily seen from the driver's side door. Okay. Yeah, and this is, he's searching all this while you guys, like we talked, you guys go off to do your thing, and he's doing this. So yeah. when Kiev comes around the corner, she notices Gloria talking to Edward. And, like I said, you're making sure he's, you know, cleaned up somewhat, got a, got a glass of, you know, water, you know, sitting there giving it to him. Uh, Actually, it's a oh. plastic cup of water, because, you know can't carry, yes. doesn't th see it right carrying your glass glasses outside. Yeah. Ah, glorious, yes, thank you. Yeah, um, he looked like he was having issues, and I, and he was just sitting there. I figured I'd help him out a little bit. Yeah, apparently he's recreational habits. Yeah, I, I kind of recognize that I had to deal with it in a previous relationship. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, I mean, it's but, okay. Uh, it was something that he did that, you know... Well, anyway, that's, that's beside the point. Yeah. But, uh... Edward. Yes, ma'am. Just so you know, your... colleagues that assaulted you, I, we were able to smooth things over and they shouldn't come bothering you a bit. Uh, but they did come in talk to Dominic Vatic. Have you ever heard oh, of them? Oh, no. You, oh, shit. They worked for Vatic? They didn't tell me yeah. that. They didn't tell me that when they originally... Oh, my God. So fucking screwed. It's okay. I'm good at persuasion, and, uh... I don't know how. Uh, well... I mean, Vatic's part of the Russian mob. I think he runs, like, the Russian mob here in town. At least that's the rumors from the neighborhood. That's why I was trying to get a job to get out of the neighborhood. Um, well, you have a job. I'm thinking. And as well as you, Gloria, how you're helping out, and I noticed how you set up the bar. I just... Um, I mean, what do you mean you saw me how I set... You haven't been back inside since I did that. I came in through the back and 
then I heard the ruckus, and then I came back around. Oh. Yeah, I just, it just seemed like it was the best thing to do. I mean, I wasn't doing anything, and um, the babysitter, I have another hour so the ba you know, before the babysitter leaves, so I thought I'd, I don't know, just be helpful. Well, much appreciative. We're going to open up, um, what's today? Tuesday? Uh, it was Monday. 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 Um, and Thursday was the soft open, soft open. I think. Right. Well, coming Thursday, uh, about an hour before we open, we'll be doing the soft opening. I'll be able to pack up your uniform and stuff. Um, your sizes on things? Oh, um, yeah. Um, she pulls out a little notebook out of her pocketbook and writes down her sizes and hands it to you. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, now, are uh, you need a ride somewhere, or...? Oh, no, I have the bus stations right around the corner. Well, I can give you a ride. I was going to take Edward back to his place. Well, I mean, um... I appreciate it. Give me a second. And I'll get that to you in a minute. Um, you find him, uh, the, the foreman, he comes out with you. The fuck happened there? No idea. They just take a hammer and a sledgehammer and break out just the one brick? You know, no idea. Probably a college prank or something. Fucking vandals. Uh, it, yeah, don't, I mean, don't, don't worry. It's just one brick. I could probably chisel it out and put it in myself here and... But it'll be fine. You don't have... Look, you need to get some rest. Go home. You can do it tomorrow. It's not that big of a deal. Well, yeah. All right. Well, well I'll, I'll tell... Just uh, what did you to know about? Tell Miss... Um, oh, shoot, I can't pronounce her damn name. It's so... One of those weird names. Uh, Miss... Uh, Ers Ezra. 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 Yeah, just tell her I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. Uh, it'll be fine. I'll take... Um, I'm, I'm guessing you're part of the management staff with us now since you came and told me. Yeah. Uh, everything should be finished, wiring and all that, by Wednesday morning, and then whatever final pick, you know, things can be taken care of. She, she or one of you guys can walk me through it, and any changes that need to be made, we'll take care of on the spot. Sure thing. I'll tell her. And he walks away, grumbling and cussing about people vandalizing, you know, things that aren't even brand fucking new yet. Yeah. I would just think it's only had seven hundred dollars that they could use to put towards that. Who? Me? Uh, I, was, I, like, I was actually I was actually gonna tell you it was going to be fifteen hundred. So Well, I'm sitting right there going through the car. <laughs> yeah. Just a little ways off. But um so yeah. Um we'll take care of that, get the car to the apartment. I don't know. I was about to give her an apartment complex, but I think it's right next to y'all's. Uh, the apartment yeah. complex is on 811 East 11th uh, Street, Austin, Texas. Yeah, I was about to have her be on, uh, um, no, that's something, um, where's the address? I was about to have her be at 1107 North uh, Interstate 35 Friend Road, one block up. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the one that we're so, uh, about. No, I'm gonna. That's that's. That's fine. Well, it's not. Not in my opinion. <laughs> it's probably too much for her. No, no. It, you know what? It would probably be the case in this situation. She actually gives an apartment number in the same building that you're in. Oh. Okay. I know exactly where that's at. Um, I, we're, we have several of our staff actually live there. Oh, really? Yes. I thought it was... Okay. Uh, yeah, um... The person who handled our move, um, set us up there. Okay. Long. 
as for the ride, I'm going to ask Vodic if, or not Vodic, Edward, <laughs> where to find Jesus, Vodic. have you already found him? <laughs> yeah. Um, not really. Uh, I've heard that he... He does a lot. He's got people that work down by the by the college. There's a college, right? Did, did yeah. we discuss that? Yes. Okay. But he mainly works out of... I think they see... Where is it? Um, East Cesar Chavez. Do you know where that's at? Uh, yes, I believe so. Yeah, so down by the... You know, down there by the river. Not too far from it. But okay. you didn't hear that from me. Oh, of course not. Because, you know, uh, rumor is he will... He doesn't reprimand his people by... Directly. He reprimands them by harming their family. The ones who work for him. Don't know I how see. true that is, but that's what I heard. Okay. Well, I believe in... Taking care of our employees... They tend to become our family. So, I uh, will set up a meeting with them and see what terms we can come up with that uh, he will leave you be. Well, good luck with that. But you want to be careful. I mean, he's not an easy person to do dealings with, from what I hear. I've never, I didn't, I wouldn't have bought this from them if, if I knew he worked for Vatic. I'd try to steer clear of that. Okay. But I don't mind recreational usage. Uh, oh, I never do it on the clock. Okay, just be careful next time on who you use. And then the rest of the conversation is going to be learning more about Gloria. Whatever she's willing to tell, just, you know, whatever girls talk about. Uh, she tells you she has a daughter, that her ex-husband's dead, they moved here from Georgia because of, um, complications where they lived at. Uh, somebody who knew her ex when he was alive made arrangements for them to move out this way. Did she give a name? And um, do I recognize? She does give you a name. And I will give you that name. Give me just a moment. Lupus may have whoa, whoa, whoa. away in the past. Stop, but today, stop, stop. I, was... I don't want an advertisement playing. What the hell is wrong with this thing? <laughs> it just started doing it. I mean, I've been doing using the site forever, and it's never played the sound for these advertisements till like, the last week. Uh, his name was... Mark Pritchett? Mark Pritchett? Okay. Yes. He seemed to be a rather dashing gentleman. Uh, you know, walked with a cane, um, but didn't seem to have a limp. I guess it was more decorative. Very handsome, too, but... Okay. I thought so. I mean, he said there was like a insurance policy or something that my ex-husband had with me as a beneficiary that, uh, that everything had been taken care of. I was actually on the way out of town when uh, one of his associates, I can't remember what her name, um, stopped me or, kept, you know, called me and told me uh, what I needed to do. So, uh, her name was... Uh, I can't pronounce that. I'm not using that one then. Beatrice. 
She didn't tell me what her last name was. Okay. I thought found it odd that a businessman would send. I mean that. I guess he equal opportunity and all that because she didn't seem to be dressed like a uh, like she worked in an office. Hmm. Okay. And it just conversation goes on about that, how nice they were. Um, somewhat of, you know, what she used to do in the past. And you catch her about to say she worked at one place, and then halfway through it, she changes it to Tilt to Kill. Okay. I'll drop Edward off, drop her off, and wait for the boys. So, uh, I don't know where, if Drew's journeying with you or me. I'm ready with you. Yeah, because he's, talk yeah. yeah, he's talking with the uh, foreman. And you overhear the guy discussing about people hitting walls with sledgehammers and such. I don't, I don't mind it at all. But I do, uh, once I get in, I start it up and go to park next to the car to wait for them to leave. Uh, I do go ahead and call Frodo on my new number. My guy back in Savannah. Uh -huh. And I uh, ask him if he has any, uh, any guys he knows who deal in the same business, street racing, car chopping, but, you know, I'm vague about what his business is. Basically, I just say in his same area of expertise in Austin. Well, uh, man. Ran into somebody who I probably don't want to deal with down here, so that's why I'm looking for somebody else. Well, where's down here? Well, you know, down in Austin. In um, Austin? When did you yeah, go to Austin? People, yeah, people are weird down here, you know? Uh, I mean, I don't really... Man, I Work, most of the know. guys I've dealt with are down here on the south side, maybe Miami... But I don't know Austin. Um, sorry. Yeah, that, but things, that's not but you know, things have gotten weird here in the last, well. Yeah, yeah, no, I was pretty deep with some random people, and things, yeah, like you were saying, were getting weird. So that's why I was telling you to hang low. But everything that. Well, it's I a good was thing you said to hang low because, you know, the other crew that worked on the other side, somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. Somebody uh, wiped them all out. They're, they just. Crimson. They, yeah, those Crimson Pistol folk, they were weird. That's why I always stuck. I had a couple, couple of my were... boys got picked up the other day for supposedly being involved in burning down the Crimson Pistols' place. They thought it was like some sort of gang thing, and I was like, "No, we ain't no no dealings with them. We don't. We weren't that kind of you know group." Yeah, I know that one of your guys got a little too greedy in the area, but that's why you know kind of let you know to ward them off and rein them in so you don't get caught up in their business. Yeah, well, the Crimson so Pistols are they just were shady. Yeah, well, they're 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 gone, man. They're they they're not here anymore. It's like somebody uh, wiped out their entire crew. Well, it's bad news and good news from the sounds of it, because I mean, yeah, it opens up more avenues for me going. and my guys, but it makes you kind of wonder. I mean, if it wasn't us, then who's wiping out you know the other crew? I mean, do I got to worry about something like that? I'm gonna give you a piece of advice and don't cause too much trouble, and you should be fine. I mean, I think their area. As long as you're not causing trouble, if you're just kind of doing what you do, you should be fine. Well, we're going to lay low for a little while until you know, this heat disappears. It's just weird. Um, you have yeah, some the, of the stores. Austin. What the fuck did you go to Austin, man? I ain't never been to Austin. Is there? I don't a know. job opportunity came open for me down here. That's why. But those two things I told you about, uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're clean. You don't have to worry about those. All right. But, uh, but I mean... So there is something else, but it's probably really hot, and I'm not going to let you know about that. I might mention it to you later down, you know, give or take a few months. I might reach out back out to you and let you know about it, and you can see if it's still there. But like I said, it was getting kind of hot. Oh, now. yeah, we got your stuff. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, um, line of credit, just like that uh, 
you, I'm sure you got hold of the old Jeep as well. Yeah. Yeah. We. I mean, everything you said, we got a hold of. I mean, we just. It just came in because I mean, you've only been gone. I mean, you only told nights. me like yesterday. Yeah. Last yeah. Night, whatever. Real I, early. There's a lot of. Kind of busy, but you know how it goes. But we haven't been able to turn a profit on any of it yet. But um. You know. I, I'm in no hurry. Like I said, as long as line of credit of some sort. I'm, you guys have been good to me. Well, just take care. Enjoy Austin. He just says it with like, like a smart-ass response. Yeah, I mean, I'd really rather not be here, but jobs open up and you got to take them where you can get them. Well, but. Yeah, but I'll, I'll let you know when that, that stuff comes available. Yeah, yeah, just... Uh, and if I, text. I I can, I'll look around or ask around for you and see if I know of anybody that runs a no, the crew out there. But like I said, most of the guys I deal with are out of Miami. You know what? I'll check with the guys that, you know, I deliver cars to in Miami. Maybe they've got like somebody who supplies out of Austin. I don't know. Uh, it's best to be a bit careful. I've already, you know, found a better Russian down here and. Ooh, yeah, I'm Russian. Yeah, I don't want to get into too much trouble, so... Uh, as, long as, they, as long as they ain't the Russian mob, I mean, that's... Yeah, exactly. They, 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 no, them guys uh, are ruthless, so I'm just glad they never had any here in Savannah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, shit. Well, watch yeah, your back. That's why I'm saying you better be careful, even with the folk down in Miami. I know more of them are a little different, but... Don't want to get you stuck in what I'm stuck in. All right, well, take care of yourself, man. Yeah, have a good one. Take care. Hang out. And uh, uh, we're going to go take a 10-minute break because I have to use the restroom, too, and Marcus said to step away. And it's yeah. after 9 o'clock. So, ladies and gentlemen, okay. don't go too far. We'll be right back after this little break. Later.
There we go. We are back. Alright. Alright, so we're back. Um, what exactly? You just got off the phone with uh, your contact back in Savannah. And you're trying to find out if there's somebody here that might do the same thing to help you out, I'm assuming? Yes, I was going to look for a uh, chop shop type of thing. But I talked to Proto. He has no idea. So I was going to follow them. And I was going to talk to Jude. Um, do you still want to talk to Edward about all the things that were going on just in case? Uh, because I see that we're dropping her off. And then you said you were going to drop Edward off somewhere else. You notice that he pulled, uh, she, Kiv, pulls a, uh, Kiv's not driving though. Kiv's got a driver, doesn't she? Uh, yes. You notice that her driver pulls up to y'all's apartment complex. And, um, Gloria gets out, thanks her for the ride, and you, uh, catch her say something else in the window or in the door. Uh, Kiv, you know she's talking to Edward and says, I hope you get better. I'm sorry, you know, that that happened to you. And says she'll see you Thursday. Yes. And then she heads inside. And then the car takes off and it starts heading further out. Uh, I'm not going to give you his address. But yeah, we'll just right. say he gives you an address and takes you there. It's like some, Jude. somewhat run down home yeah. on the east side. Yep, Jude. I've probably taken him home first since I had to meet up with them anyways. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll just be away. Yeah, and that was the thing. It's like we were going to talk to uh, Edward anyway. Uh, about what he was getting into trouble with me and Jude, and that's why I was asking Jude, uh, do you still want to talk to Edward about what's going on? Uh, we can talk to him on Thursday. Yeah, you would have overheard, or uh, Judd would have, Jude would have or overheard that he had actually gotten whatever job, and he would be there Thursday. Yeah, yeah and the whole thing with uh, me is it's like we were going to talk to him about everything that would happen there, and if Jude could fill me in, that's fine. Yeah. I feel All you. right, then, yeah, we have no need to follow him around, but I do feel bad that we followed him in this car. Uh, although, I am looking for a chop shop. Uh, do you know, by any chance, where the Russian mob deals? Because I'm looking for a place that's not them. You I don't want to find a chop shop that's anywhere near Who are you asking? Uh, their territory, Jude. I, I know well, you sneak around and you listen to people. Did you hear anything like that? Jude's like, I've only well, been in town a couple days, an hour. What are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> give, give me, give me some, give me a couple days, and I'll find uh, you. Well, well, I was curious if you overheard them talking about anything with uh, Edward. Uh, well, I mean, it sounds like it sounded like um, their presence is more up by the university. Is that correct, from what you would say? That's a good question. Uh, university and I said they, East Cesar yeah. Chavez, so down by the river. So University and River. Uh, that's why I'm asking this. East Cesar Chavez. Okay. Yeah, which is yeah, on if the you river. take I-35 down towards Colorado River, it's kind of like East Cesar Chavez, Holly, just uh, the rainy, I guess it's rainy, rainy street historic district. All down there in that section. Oh, the, in the East Caesar Chavez district. Okay, yes. that's not near the university. Okay. No, so they do sell drugs and stuff uh, near the university, but okay. he seems to but operate his area mainly is down here. Yes. So the okay. drug operation is kind of near university. That's to be expected. So I'm gonna be. <sighs> Shit. I, I might do some looking if you're willing. Uh, I might do some looking for a chop shop of sorts. Away from there. I don't want to deal with them at all. No, I want to be a, kind of a surprising blow. Um, yeah. I, I, I did have a thought, and I want your opinion, Jude. All right. What's your opinion on the Italian mafia? I don't know much about them. So. Fuck the Russian mob. I... And he kind of gets quiet for a second since we're driving in Knuckles' car. Mm -hmm. 
you know what? It's fine. Yeah, um, I have an idea. Let's talk about it uh, later. How's that sound? Sounds good. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll follow, like, I'll, I'll note down what his address is. You don't have to give it to me. It's like, okay, he lives there. Um, and then we'll follow you back to uh, wherever you're going, Kiev. To our apartment. And then I'll, uh, is there a parking lot near the apartments, but not the apartments? There's a parking garage attached to the apartments. I say that. I'm not even looking. There is one on the opposite side of uh, I-35. Well, that's 51st uh, Street. I don't want that one. Yeah, yeah. There's. Uh, it looks like apartments on the other side of I-35 near... Uh, You're looking at 10th Street parking? Uh, Sure, I could be. I don't know. I have no idea how big cities work. So let's go with that. It's just on the other side of the road. It's kind of diagonal from the apartments. It's between 11th and 12th. Uh, if it's down south, then sure. I don't. I really don't care. Um, 11th, East 11th Street goes right by. It's on the north of East 11th Street. So I'll park across the street because I don't want to park this directly in the apartments. Um, although I do want it in a uh, camera, in the side of the camera. But if it gets stolen, okay, whatever, really. Oh, oh well. Um... I'm not terribly worried about it, but I do want it in a place I know where it's at, but if it gets stolen, it gets stolen. That's kind of how I feel. I'd rather it be, uh, oh, you mean parking, oh, okay, I see parking garage. Uh, yes, I see the AMLI east side of parking garage. Is that what you were talking about? Yes. Okay, yeah, I'll park it there. That's a much better spot. That's attached to the apartments, and it's, it's there, but it's far enough away in my opinion. So I will park it at the AMLI East Side Apartments. Uh, you, you get a sense that he's paranoid and he thinks this might be bugged because of who owned it. Mm -hmm. uh, that he's kind of being skittish and eh. You're certain you when see? you search the tr uh, vehicle, you didn't find any bugs. He is not a smart man, so he may be feeling certain, but he may also be feeling that he's a dumbass. If that makes sense. He knows he's not the brightest bull. He's been around people who are smarter than him. He's just no a problem. paranoid. So yeah, he parks it there, uh, kind of in a lighted area, if there is one available. Um, as they exit, and they're getting a little bit of ways... So I have this idea. I, I, I am from, and he points in the northern direction. He doesn't say which way he's from. He just says, I am from, and then he points towards roughly northeast-ish. Mm -hmm. and, and I used to have dealings in that area. And you get a heavy, you know, his accent is Bronx, New York, uh, wait, wait. kind of Italian Our to a degree. Are you telling me you used to be with the mob? Give me a second. I mean, the sarcasm is there. And, and he you. gives you a bit of a shove, like we're joking and being buddy buddy. Um, and he, but he does nod. Uh, you know, if you fuck up sometimes and they don't just, he puts his thumb across his neck as like a cutting the throat type of deal. You know, if you fuck up, they just you know basically kill you is what he's pointing out. You know. I, you know, sometimes you get in trouble, and I decide to go south. You get a sense he's lying from that. He actually got moved south because he fucked up. Um, and and all of here? this is uh, not said out loud, but insinuated. And I was thinking, you know, the Russians... We have a problem. It's not letting eh. bring the pictures out. But the Italians, if the Italians were to come down and take over for them... Mm-hmm. What do you think? What's your opinion on them? All right, I'm trying to you know, give you an actual map of Austin, you know, that involves where the departments are at, but for some odd reason, it's not transferring over. So, mm. um, you know, I have no opinion, and this I mean, is kind of how I feel. I don't want to 
first say, if you're not comfortable with doing what I'm thinking, this is something I'm feeling. I'm not a huge fan of the Russians. I know how my... And he sits there and thinks for a second as they're walking. Family works. They're not as bad as the Russians. I'm not saying they're good. I'm not saying they're great. They're just not as bad as the Russians are. Well, I mean, you know, my entire youth was you know, disliking the Russians. So. Perfect. Then, you know, replace the worst with the bad. Because if you replace, you know, the Russians, then it's going to be a vacuum and someone else is going to come in. Yeah, I mean, communism but I know is such a bad thing. Exactly. Uh, he may or may not get that comment. Um, but you get that if we bring the Russians in, or the Italians in, yeah, they could take over. We could try and, we could kind of, you know, start a war. Not with our kind. Not even with, you know, the head well, honcho. The big cheese. Let me just say uh, this. We could just, and if you as don't long as this does is not in with you in a park firing on an SI helicopter, I'm okay. My plan is to do this. And he looks around and he finds a shadow. My plan is to tr try and, you know, control this. And he steps back into the shadows as he's talking to you. Okay. He doesn't say anything, but he says, My plan is kind of trying to control this from as he backs into the shadows and then comes back out. Uh, basically saying he wants to be, you know, the in other person words, in charge, you're, puppeteer. You're trying not to do this in 24 hours. I've got the rest of my life to do this. Then you know what? Go for it. And, and I'm going to bring this up with basically uh, everyone I know. Mm -hmm. Because... I don't want anybody feeling that, hey, guess what? Explosion. It, and yeah. the thing is, if you didn't want anything to do with this, that's fine. Like I said, rest of my life to do this, and I could work on it over time. And the thing is, is if, you know, gang, if gangbangers are fighting over each other, that shouldn't bring any attention towards us, you know? There mm -hmm. should be no reason for people to come after us, and he makes a kind of a, he has his hand and forefinger out like a telephone. Like if you were to act like you're on the telephone, he points towards his heart. There should be no reason to, for anybody to, you know, air quotes, stake us or look into staking us if just gangbangers are fighting over a territory. That's kind of what he's insinuating as he's talking because he is paranoid as fuck and trying to insinuate to you in case anybody's listening. What's going on here? He is not paranoid at all. Air quotes. Paranoid. The hell? My, no, not at all. All my maps are not showing up anymore. Uh, but yeah, no, that's the thought I had. and I know I got kicked out, but if I can kind of rein them in, I feel like, from what I've talked to the boss man about, the head toncho, the big cheese, um, there is an air of... What's, what, what's the right word? The air of putting yourself out there to make people be in awe of you. Uh, you know, you can kind of push your will onto others, per se. And I think that would be very useful in the future. If I'm trying to get this situation started, the ball rolling, you know. But that's, you know, again, in time, not 24 hours. Let's say quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 I, you know, I, I completely understand, and I think, you know, if this is where you want to go, let's go for it. Yeah, and if you ever say, hey, I'm done, I want out of this, that's great. I'm not going to, you know, throw you under the bus, I'm not going to mention you. No, 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 I'll, that's I'll, it. Yeah. I won't stake you on a roof. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Like, you know, there's no reason that you should be stuck in the situation I made. You know, that's I hear awful. it's great this time of year. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but, but I do think I, think I, he, I think he's waiting for us. Uh, yeah. And I was saying this as we, were, as we were oh, walking, watching out I for know. people. And once we got inside, <laughs> nothing, it's just like casual conversation. Once we get inside, 
Although I was planning on talking to everybody else about, you know, party and everything. It's like it makes no sense once we step inside what the hell we're talking about. But you kind of yeah. get the party is what we were just talking about. Yeah. Uh, you know, just in case they wanted to join us or if they said, no, not into it, that's fine. Yeah. No, I understand. I understand. Uh, but the big thing is, is, you know, that car, I would like to, you know, a nice paint job, you know. Black's not really my style, you know, but maybe a paint uh-huh. job, some stuff like that. I'm really into that, you know. I was thinking maybe a nice green. Have you ever seen the Dukes of Hazard? I, I really liked that orange. That orange was really nice to me. It, yes, it stuck out, but that orange, I loved it. Now, the livery, on the other hand, I think that sticks out a little too much. But the orange on the other hand, I like the orange. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So, uh, but I'm not much of one for running moonshine in the dark. But I'll see if I can figure out a place that you can take. And that's, I mean, that's why I was thinking if you ever go somewhere, I might uh, tag along because I, was, I have a little bit of knowledge on what to say to the right people, and you know, not necessarily pull information out of them, but get them to spill the beans. Right. Oh, hey, Kip. Hello. How's it going? Oh, it's going well. How are y'all? Doing well. You were going to show us town. Yes. Um, I understand, Jude, that you're into, uh, helping with the homeless and all that? Oh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been part of that community for many years now. Uh, uh, I assume you all hopped into the car, correct? Yeah. Uh, Then take a right down 11th Street, go down three blocks over course of the park, and she's going to point out where uh, the food pantry is. Uh, okay. As as we were stepping in the car, I'm going to point towards the driver and ask, uh, "Do you trust him? Trust well, them? He's been with me for several years. Uh, um, no offense, I trust him more than I trust you. Um, that's good, but I do have a topic I'd like to bring up with you that might be a little." And, and he makes a waving motion with his hands, like an iffy idea. You and the mm. boss. Yeah. What about me and the boss? Well, I have an idea that I'd like to, you know, pursue. But I want mm. your opinion and, of course, the boss's opinion on it. And I don't know if necessarily we can... If it's good to talk about in mixed company. You may trust them, but there's always that ability. I don't trust them, if that makes sense. If you have... If you have information, you can use it however you deem it necessary. Just send it to you. Okay. Yes, um... I understand you haven't been... amongst us for... a while, correct? I've been enjoying the nightlife for like a month ish okay well there is this ability that we have where we take on mortals who become our ah uh, i hate yeah, the I, word I know servants i know exactly what you're talking about and he, i motioned towards jude uh he filled me in on a lot of details early on okay um if that's the case uh yes the Russian mob. Is it under Head Honcho, Big Cheese, Boss Man's... And he makes a volunteering motion as if he's saying control? You, uh, you mean... All right. Back in Russia? No, no, no. He, Bad or, oh, basically, he's, basically, he's getting at is the Russian mob in Austin under Kristoff's control? Or are they just their own thing? Uh, Back to, like, puppeteering. 
believe they are on their own unless I get a note. And that's something I'd like to bring up with uh, the boss. Yes. I, and you get a heavy New York accent from the from uh, Igor. Uh, it's obvious that's not his name, but it's it is what it is. Um, I was thinking of bringing in the Italian ma- mafia to kind of replace them. Now, here's the thing, and hear me mm-hmm. out. This would be a gang war. This would not be a war between, um, he pops a fang loosely and he pulls down a lip and taps on the fang. This would be a simple gang war. There would be no reason for us, taps the fang, to be involved. Unless there was a need for certain persuasions to be enacted. Um, and, and this is something that I would be dealing with. If uh, you would all be wishing to intervene and assist me along this journey, this is not going to be over the next few days. I've got all the time in the world to bring and control the uh, bring in the Italian mafia to help control Austin instead of the Russian mafia mob. Um, I um, would not be the figurehead, of course. No. Our our kind, from what I've gathered, kind of puppeteer and control from the shadows. That's kind of my idea. Uh, bring them in. I know how they work. I'm mm-hmm. sure you have no idea what I mean when I say that because I'm never from that area. Sarcasm heavily included in that. Uh, growing up, I may have dabbled in that and been a part of that. And I think they deal with these situations much better than the Russians would. Well, you have no... I do have... about going after the Russians. I... Growing up in Eastern Europe, I had to deal with their cruelty. And, And this is something I wish to bring up with you ahead of time. If you want nothing to do with it, you don't have to have anything to do with it. I do not shit where I sleep, of course. So that's why I want you to know what's going on. That way it is not a surprise if they come knocking, if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. I want as many people on my side as possible to help me along this journey. And if you don't want to be there, that is okay. But my long-term goal is to (laughs) replace the Russians with the Italian Mafia. Because I I know how they work, and I know... And if you're willing to help, I would highly appreciate that. Yes. I have no issue with the Italian Mafia. I mean, they brought us blue eyes. So. Would you help me in this endeavor? It was certain extents. I have no... And uh, please... I am not saying you are stuck helping. If you ever at any point decide, hey, I am doing ABC wrong, please let me know. And also, if you have any input, I would love to hear your input. But if you ever want to leave, that is fine by me. I am not saying, like, when I was mortal, he says that kind of quietly, so hopefully the driver doesn't hear, even though you mentioned he may be your ghoul, slave, whatever. Yes, he's my thing. Yeah, he, you get that sense that he says mortal quietly enough because he's not confident in your mm-hmm. person. Um, I have plenty of time to take this action. Of course it's not going to take 24 hours a week, a month, a year. I plan this as a long-term goal and maybe puppeteering Mm-hmm. I also wish to bring this up to Kristoff to get his opinion. And if he wants nothing to do with it, I am perfectly okay with that. I don't want right. anybody implicated in this situation if they do not wish to be. Yes. And if anybody wishes to leave, I am perfectly fine with that. Yes. I am not uh, like them back home where once you are... He thinks for a second for the right word blood-bound, let's say. Once you make the deal, you are there for life. 
I am not wishing that upon any of you. I know that blood bonds are seriously are a serious thing amongst our kind. Yes. And I am not wishing to bind any of you. I just know that if we can get the mortals to do all of our dirty work for us, mm -hmm. then maybe puppeteering from the shadows and making sure that they are not ruling with such an iron fist and from behind said iron curtain. Very well. Uh, I have no issue with this. And I have no issue with uh, assisting you as long as our... And of course I am going to mention this to the boss. I do yes. not want him to have a nasty little surprise on his hands again. Yes. Um, as you may have noticed in Savannah... I wish for business. this to be quiet. Behind yes. the scenes. The yes. humans are doing... Human right. thing. The mortals are fighting amongst themselves. Because if obviously he points at his fang as he taps it, are around and causing troubles, we will have issues in town. Yes. So what it sounds like you're trying to do is establish yourself as the prince of all stuff. Which is fine, because as you know... Not Savannah. the prince. I don't wish to be a prince. I wish to have the Italian mafia replace the Russian mob. I don't Correct. really wish to be in charge of an entire town. Just them. Well, but if I do so happen to become prince, I have a lot to learn. Yes. And, and I do wish for... I will bring this up to Kristoff. I will talk to him. And I will take all of his insight into great, uh, negative damn, uh, great, uh, Okay, so it's a roll 20 issue, insight. not an issue on my end. Yes. Uh, because I know that he has been around much longer than I. I am, but it, it does not matter to me if you know my age at this point. I am only as old as I was. Yes. I am not older like he is. Well, he has much more insight on the situations than I do. Mm -hmm. And I would also love to have all of your insights if this were to come to true, come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to work on becoming better at speaking with people and making an impression upon people as well. I know I look as strong as I am dumb, if that makes sense. Mm, yes. But if I can become stronger, or smarter, words, if I can become more charismatic, or manipulative, as mm -hmm. I am with my fists, I am working on, and I might make it, might talk to him about becoming more Resentful as I can be. Yes. Um, but like I was trying to say, Kristoff has no interest it's... in controlling the city. If we are to stay here, it would be best if one of y'all perhaps eventually became the prince. And if controlling the Italian mob. That would be mafia, mafia, please. We mafia. are not such apologize. vicious beasts. My we are not apologies. as vicious. Controlling one of the major criminal organizations in town would be a step towards securing that position. Because eventually we'll have more of us come to the town. And, and it is don't... very it is very easy to say, hey, get a list of uh, the boss's dealings, are under our control and under our protection. Even if they may not be, per se, it is mm -hmm. easy enough to say that. Right. 
I just don't want someone else to come through and plant their flag after we've built our own reputation here. If you know what I mean. And, and I do not intend to go against that words. I do not plan or want to go against the man that saved my life. I do not want to betray him. I will not betray him. Right. I want him to be in my corner pocket as long as I exist. But if he does not agree with this situation, I want to talk to him and I want to... He... He may be the deciding factor on whether I decide to go through with this or not. Because I do not want to cause trouble for him. I know that he mentioned he has several places he can live at. But I don't want to be a thorn in his side. Right. Um, if that makes sense. The last one, right, the last one went to Jacksonville, Florida. Your buddy who went to Jacksonville or some sort of... He was a lot more outspoken than I and a lot more impulsive. He saw what he wanted and he took it. I told him, we have all of the rest of our lives to enact our revenge, our plans, our plotting. We can plot for tens of years, dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands if you're that petty. But I, I plan within, I, I would like to say the next five years to have the Italian mafia overrule the uh, Russian mob and have them wiped from existence. I don't want them having any stragglers or anything like that. I want them to be... And the thing is, if it falls apart and ends horribly, mm -hmm. that's it. Maybe in another dozen years, there may be another try. But I do but, know that since we have all of our lives to work on this. Yes. Well, setting yourself into taking over and all that, uh, the Brickman, sort of like in business, write a five-year plan and present that to Kristoff, and that may help Swagger his opinion on it. Um, Swagger his opinion? Never heard that then phrase. I may not present it to him tonight. Maybe later, once I've had time to write it down, check it, double check it. Because I'm sure he'll ask you a bunch of questions. I don't see any issue with it. Uh, just like I said, apparently as I know it, we four or five just a couple more. Those of us that uh, live this lifestyle are far and few between. And if we are to live out in this town, I really would hate for someone to come in and try to plant their own flag in our backyard. If you know what I mean? That is kind of why I'm hoping to have it. And this is when you mentioned Prince. I don't think Prince is the right term, because we are not connected with that side of things. But I don't want to say, what is it, Baron? Either? Right. We are the ones in charge, if that makes sense for independent. Whatever the term is, if I, I, if I am the one, or someone else... If Kristoff decides to take up that mantle, the ones oh. to be running the town, to keep them out, or if they decide to try and push in, they must contend with everything that is going on. The, and, so, and to, our, to our viewers for a moment, uh, apparently Roll20 has issues loading maps, so that's why you're looking at a blank screen. Oh, yep. Okay. Uh, but... I know that my kind, my clan, are not normally the ones that tend to be the figureheads. Um, though, 
if that were to be the case. And Jude, please do object if you have anything against what I'm saying. Oh, no, no, no. You Feel have, free. You have a long-term plan going on. I'm all okay with that. Yes, and I do not plan on this happening within the next day, two days, month, whatever. No, no, I mean... Like you've told me, we've got all the time in the world. We've got years. And if things do go south, cut ties and go somewhere else. Exactly. Like, mortals, they are, from what you've mentioned, they are a... And it sounds bad, being as young as I am. I, I'm not a fan of the term. They are a tool to get our desire. We want what we want, and if they are the tools we need to use. I don't wish to involve any of my family, but they have sent me along my way for many, for many years now. Several years now, not many. But they yeah, saved I, my life from what would have been the end of it. Instead so, of a all-out war... Uh, that is the worst-case scenario, is what I'm saying. I'm thinking a slow and gradual overtake. <sighs> but, with, but with the way the, the mafia and mob have tend to work, it ends up being a bloodshed in one way or another. At some point, at least. What if you had this flag become bound to you? Are you meaning if I were to blood bind? Turn him into your gold. Or your wool, not your gold. Uh, I would have possibly an issue with that mainly for the fact that they are the Russian mob and I am the Italian mob from my life right. they have right. much different living styles uh, ways of working things that I would have to rework them into the Italian mob and at that well, point no. maybe I would have to fight with or against the Italian mob from them wanting to intervene here because they see Things are so much the same, they could just take over and nothing would change. Right. What so I was if I were to is... bring them in as a figurehead and control them from the shadows, that would be much easier. Right. But I do well, value your input. Please, continue. Yes. I was looking at if you make Vod your ghoul and just basically force the Russian Mafia to leave peacefully and then bring your own brotherhood down to take over. I feel the best case scenario would already be a war of attrition between the oh, two right. of them. So there is not such a sudden power vacuum that right. somebody else has the chance to come in. Yeah. Okay. With your because mindset, you're, you're under the impression that... Uh, you know, the Russian mob just up and left for no reason whatsoever that would raise a lot of questions. Yeah, so if there is already a, pow a struggle of attrition, if there was a, okay, I'm leaving, I'm tired, we've lost enough, and then powers change, that would be much easier. Um, By the way, about three blocks south of the apartments is Ishevez. Oh, perfect. I need to uh, do some thinking real quick. Uh, just to think amongst myself on what you all have brought into my mind. Where did uh, you tell your driver to go, by the way? I'll be right back. Uh, basically just driving around town and just going to point out, okay, here's where the food banks are, things of interest to, like, uh, the parishes and stuff for you to... Okay. Work on his so just just a stuff. just a roundabout driving around, just cruising. Tour and then start heading back towards the manor, unless they say, "Hey, let's go here or there." Okay, um, I'm just making sure because you know he's up there doing his job driving around. I just want to make sure there wasn't like some final destination he needed to go to, or if he had him stopping anywhere. Oh no, um, just do a quick tour, uh, pointing out. There's also yep. right behind the 
apartments is actually a gun shop. <laughs> Saw that on well, the map. While they are driving and uh, Igor is uh, spelling out his plans, um, I'm using my wits and streetwise, my urban survival, um, to basically learn where, I mean, I'm spotting where homeless people congregate. I'm spotting where, God, I'm spending more power. Um, yeah, see, it does, oh, I see the final number, but I don't see the, uh, the things on the dice. Do you? Oh, I do. I do. You might need to refresh. And this will be the third time, too. Uh, that's two more, so I have five. Um, successes. What I'm doing is now it comes up. I'm just okay. trying to pick out where um, homeless communities seem to be congregating because it may not be at the food pantries and stuff. It's like underneath some interstate bridges, things like that. All right. And I'm keeping my eye open also for any ghostly thing that I might happen to see. But that'll come up when I also do the ghost quest. Yeah, which I haven't researched yet, so... Yeah. There, there Austin has a fair number so, of haunted locations. The Driscoll oh, yeah. Hotel being the big one downtown. Um... But yeah, this area here, y'all see the pinging? Yeah. That is East uh, Chavez. And right about where the inn is, the tail end of the inn, is the uh, apartment complex. And then over here, is just off 11th Street, there's a park. And across from the park is the food pantry. Okay. Um, I'm just highlighting East Chavez. Okay. And of course, the club's about there where the dot of the eye is in Austin. Yeah. But yeah, we're just driving around and putting out places that might be of interest that I know about. Uh, let's see if it would be streetwise and. What to see if I may know where like criminal activity would take place, like such as chop shops or gambling or anything along those lines. Okay. Um, uh, would that be streetwise and what? Wits. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. Wits. Uh, so at one point in time, you do try past the Oakwood Cemetery. Uh-huh. And um, you do see what appears to be uh, people dressed in older clothing, maybe 1930s, 1940s, okay. uh, 1830s, 1840s, uh -huh. kind of walking around out there. Okay. Uh, that would be Oakwood Cemetery, uh, established back in 1839. Yeah, you catch different tones of uh, dress appearance that definitely doesn't fit this time period. And I'm, I'm sure with your abilities you're able to see the difference between uh, yeah. solid and apparitional. Yeah. That's the only one you're going to see anything outside. Everything else is more of an inside deal. Yeah. I expected that, so... Close out the muscle cars. You're all good with that. Mainly, I'm just setting up places I'm going to want to go over the next couple of nights. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah. And you, and you are more than the chop yeah, shops. You're more than able to. Uh, now, what was some of the other places you said you're looking for? Um, uh, criminal activities like chop shops. He's looking for maybe illegal gambling, uh, drug dealers. Because I know he has a type. Uh, as you're driving through certain parts of town, including the East Chavez part of town, you do see dealers on the street corners. Um, some neighborhoods, you've got like a bunch of them sitting out on uh, benches and around cars. People drive up, you know, do the whole money thing. 
drive off. Uh, as far as chop shops are concerned, you really have no idea where those are at. Yeah. Um, no but you do know there. where a couple high-end gambling uh, locations are possibly, because you know you you're going to be running a nightclub, and that's one of the things that you may have to deal with at some point in time, or maybe even be a part of. Somebody may or, have actually approached you at one point in time and said, "Hey, look, you know, we kind of bounce around doing uh, high-end yeah. gambling. So do you want us to establish one here or no?" And you may have turned them down at the time uh, for reasons, but yeah, yeah. But, just wanted something like that might be attached to somebody who looking to get rid of. Yeah, and his whole opinion on when we see chop like uh, drug dealers, if it's in the East Chavez side or near the university, it's maybe hit them once in a while, but he's not going to make a habit of it because if they're mob, he doesn't want to tip them off that maybe somebody's fucking with them. It was yeah. just a yeah. once-off incident that yeah. happened. Per per yeah, periodically driving through the town, you do catch... Um, like this group here wearing colors. Yeah, you probably go after the colored gangs versus. Well, rephrase that. You go after the gangs who are wearing colors. Yes, yes, that. <laughs> the way you just said that did not come out right. I just wanted to clarify yeah. it for any viewers. It's not what he yes. meant. <laughs> so the gangs wearing colors. Um, yeah. You know, Crips, Bloods, yeah. whatever, you know. Varieties yeah, of let's whatever see. they are doing. And there it's probably MS-13. And, and you would probably target them big time. Yeah, people, not the Russian mob. Because, you know, because, MS-13 is like one of the more dangerous there are. Yeah, and he wouldn't want anybody tracking or trying to follow or bringing trouble back. So he would definitely take his time choosing one, maybe another, maybe another. And he wouldn't just go after gangs. He would also go after the predators himself. People that are, you know, not innocent in any way, shape, or form. It's like you see somebody doing some shady shit in the street, beating up on somebody that is innocent. Of course. Vigilanteism. Okay. And then pretty much after the tour, I take them back to the... Unless they want to stay at their apartments, I take them back to the Hacienda. Take them back, I, yeah, go back to the Hacienda. Yes, because I do want to mention everything I've told you guys to Kristoff. Uh, when you get back, you notice there are probably a few more uh, armed guards walking the, the the compound. They're all dressed in you know the black you know black suits, red shirt, black tie, all carrying what looks like uh, a couple of them may have been carrying was it PP nineties? P nineties. Yeah, P nineties. I don't know why I said PP nineties. I think there's a, there's a there's a pistol. It's a PP something or other. I, I I don't know all my guns. I apologize. I just you know whatever. But yeah, a couple of them, they're the most of them are walking around with P90s. Um, they're you get to the door. Your driver, you've not given me his name yet. Oh. Opens the door for you. Something, you know, bland and generic there. And... Um, uh, Gilberto opens the uh, front door as you get close. Oh, good evening. Welcome home. Simply not him. Gloria, is your room all ready and set? Uh, and there will be a meal prepared for you, if you wish, within the hour. Now, is the master in? The master is in his study, uh, currently working. Um, I can check with him to see if he is available. I, I would appreciate that. Oh, very well. Um, then he walks off. And he comes back a few moments later. Uh, the master said he's not too busy if you wish to speak. He, like I said, he is in his study. Uh, Caleb, go ahead and take a car around to the back and... Um, Gloria made you something to eat as well. It's in the kitchen. 
And, and what I talked to him about if the master was available, I would have asked all of you if you had any insight, opinions, wanted to join me in any way, shape, or form, or hands off. Oh no, you go on. You go on and talk to him about what you want to do, and um, I will. Um, I was actually going to go sit up by the pool and look at the stars. Because it's too late to kind of go out and start combing the city. And how about you, Kip? I'm sorry, what was your question? Uh, if you wanted to join me talking to uh, Master, the boss, about what I've talked to you about. Oh, yes, I have a few things I need to relate to him as well, but... Uh, what exactly is uh, Christoph working on? Is he in a business meeting or...? I Honestly, uh, madam, I did not uh, bother to ask him. I just knew that he was working on something in the office. Mm, it could be did any of his uh, business ventures that he has here and abroad. Uh, did he mention that he did not want to be disturbed or anything? Uh, the... No, when I told him that... Uh, the sirs and madam had returned and wished to speak with him. He said that you were welcome to come in at any time. He was not too busy to speak with you. Uh, he was very interested in to see how tonight's interviews went at the new club um, and to see how well uh, masters are, you know, transitioning to the new city. Moves can be somewhat chaotic, especially in the situations that you, what they have found themselves in. I think uh, we should talk to him about what he has to ask first. Very well. Make our way up to I or I make my way up to his offices. It's not up, it's a room off to the side, not too far. Yeah. Okay. Not um twice. Yes, do you come in? Walk in. So, I will hand hand some um, the paperwork from the office and uh, your ward has arrived, Miss Gloria. Oh, she wasn't my ward. She was in a bad place, and I felt it necessary to find her a safe place to be. Um, and the safest place I knew as far as from Savannah was here in Austin. Uh, of course, I did not expect her to search for employment at our club. I figured she'd find some place else to work in town. But I, I guess it's one way to keep an eye on her and make sure she stays safe. Yes. Uh, um. Yes, I did not share with you, Kier, because like I said, I didn't expect it to come, you know, up front. Um... Uh, well, e I e -V -I -E. people she interacted and described matched some folks I knew. Yeah, so I, yes, I figured as much. Um, look, her ex-husband was a friend of uh, Igor's and Judd's back in Savannah. He decided not to come with us and go to Jacksonville, whereas... They did. I figured the best place to keep her safe was to keep her close. But like I said, I was not really expecting her to attend, you know, file for a job there, but... Well, she seems very talented, so... Well, uh, Strix did a thorough background check to find out what she knew as far as your work and uh, previous. They also asked her a few questions, so it didn't seem too odd that we had done so. Uh, she has the qualifications in which she gave you. They're just not the same business names. Mm -hmm. We went with uh, Very well. other establishments that um, cater to the same clientele, if you mean, if you know what I mean. Yes. And from my understanding, she does have a good business mind. Which she did seem to have that. So. Of course, uh, yes. she... Probably one of the reasons why her and uh, um, Devin did not, or well, JT or Angel, whatever name it was he was going by, I don't know what he's going by now, but um, 
maybe that's one of the reasons why. He was more flakyish and she was more, you know, business oriented. I try not to get into those uh, relationships like that. I, the ones I have are hard enough to deal with. I'm mentioning the ones you have. Uh, yes. I. I have a proposition for you. All right. You've only been in town for three hours, so do tell. Yes, yes, yes. So, we've come across the Russian mob. Um, well, I'm certain there's a Russian mob is here. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's the Arancheros, there's the, uh, Arroyos, um, the Chulos. I mean, there's several different kind of groups here in town. I expect you to run into somebody, especially with the yes. kind of people you used to run with. Well, what is the issue? I had this idea for a long-term goal. Well, I mean, goals are always a good thing to have. I mean, it keeps you on a path. What exactly are we... What is your goal? And I, I've already talked to everybody else, uh, or the other two about this, I should say, not everybody. Um, yeah, so Strix is not here yet. She's still dealing with some things between transit. Um... Was it Rustaf is around town somewhere, but uh, I mean, his services wasn't needed yet, and Vincent is not here at all. I think he went back to Paris to deal with businesses there. Hence why, Judd, I was going to have you step into his role while we're here in Austin, if that was not too much of an issue for you. Oh, Judd's not there. He oh, didn't go off. That's right, you went out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, he went out. Well, he, he says it, and he's like, Judd's not in here, is he? I don't believe so. Uh, I just uh, figured he walked behind you invisible as he tends to do, or at least used to do. I think he meandered off elsewhere. I have a long-term goal of replacing this Russian mob with the Italian mafia in town. I mean, why on earth would you wish to do that? I know how they work, and they are not as aggressive or assertive as immediate as the Russian mob <laughs> seems to be. Oh, I mean, yeah, tell that to uh, J. As Hoover. they have already attacked one of our employees. Oh, did they now? I mean, you just went for interviews today. We already have employees, Kiv? Yes, there are a few that uh, stood out to us. And this young gentleman, Edward, Eddie, I believe was his name. He will make a fine cook. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I can't expect you to have a few. Uh, so, the club is taken care of as far as that's concerned. Okay, so Eddie or Edward had an issue with someone who was attached or affiliated with the Russian Mafia? He, from what I know of, he has... Uh, a curricular activities uh, and apparently he purchased from the wrong folks and they okay. came back to try to swindle more money out of him. Ah yes that can happen when you uh, double into those kind of worlds. Uh, so uh, do tell, give me some more details shall we? Uh, the Italian mafia once they are paid what they are due, they do not try to go off for more. Whereas what it sounds like, these these ones decided to try and extort for more than they deserved. Well, I mean, they are and criminals after all. We dealt with the situation and I had the thought that over the next not anytime soon but we could and you could say no. That is fine. This is a goal of mine, and I do not wish to bring anybody that does not wish to be involved into it. I still know of some connections back from where I came from that may be interested in expanding their horizons down into the south here. And it could be a simple gang war. We do not have to involve ourselves. It will not be of our kind. It will be just simple mortals doing mortal things 
It will be a game war which could be controlled from the shadows. Ah, so you wish to take on more of a Camarilla type um, role here? I hate the sound of that. I was thinking more independent, but the Italian well, I, mafia has more of a presence than the Russian mafia does. Well, I understand. I mean, you would and the, not be the Italians could be controlling the black well, market side of things. The, their role versus the Russians. Well, I do have a few questions, though, before you go in much further. Um, why don't you send to Savannah because of an issue in... That was my mistake. I decided to go out of my own and mess with the people who not, should not have been messed with to begin with. But it was a learning experience. Do you still have contacts to, that they, are not hostile towards you? Or would you reach out to them as a different individual, seeing how, you know, Dev, uh, Dominico is uh, currently dead? Since I no longer exist, I was. I do still have some knowledge of people who exist in that same mafia and this is nothing i wish to pursue immediately not within the next month to begin and start and push them out with uh jude has informed me and taught me that we have plenty of time to sort this thing out and well, that is what i am planning yes, as plenty long as you of do time it to safely and and you know use your, your head and keep your wits about you a long-term goal uh, next question. Um, I had the question on the top of my tip of my tongue, and then apparently I lost it. And this is the DM, not the player character. Uh, shit. I did have an idea of going a certain direction, but with this and being oh, around yes. certain people, I wish to make more of a awe slash presence of myself and less of a brute force type of presence well i mean just because you are Luha doesn't mean you have to be a brute i mean being raised the way he kind of does the whole kinda knew, but. look at himself so you know with his seersucker suit or no his armani suit and everything and exactly being around too i have learned that that is not the only way to go Another question. I can still resort you. to that direction if I need to, but I'm hoping to become more of the persuasive type, if that were to be the case. It's always nice to have goals. Um, so, what would you do about the uh, local law enforcement? You would have From to have experience. somebody or some group in there, for because you can't just bring in another criminal organization and not expect the police to get involved that is my experience is if there were a gang war of some sort and this was brought up to me by emotions over towards Kiv I am not sure if making a ghoul of this Vodic that we have encountered or if this Vodic is even mortal really well, I mean, always hope for the worst if this Vodic is actually a kind of ours I mean there uh, is that possibility but uh, you know when we established here we had no record of any kindred uh, running anything but you never know that can uh, always be as you put it from the shadows and, and that is my plan um, if possible to ghoul this botic and a gang were to ens were to ensue um, it would be a slow process a long tedious process oh, yes please because lord knows uh, our time in savannah was definitely cut off short due to issues there let's not yes not make and the I same mistakes here if you wish to go this route yes please take it slow and, and that's why i want to inform route. you if you said no then I'd be fine with cutting this off here and planning on something else maybe <laughs> later. And I, if you wanted nothing to do with this, that is also fine as well. That well, is what I've told them. If this is an endeavor of my own, I can work on it on my own. Well, but I would not hide anything from you either. either. I do appreciate that. Now, mind you, I am not your sire. 
I maybe but you have saved me from death multiple times. I may be your a benefactor, if you will, but eventually you must traverse this world by your own merits, and if that's the route you wish to take, who am I to stop you? I just have a request that it does not involve any of my holdings. Don't bring it here. Please don't bring it to the club. Or the any other... are off limits as well. Uh, well, I, yeah, I... Please don't bring it there either, because, you know, there are certain individuals that I might have dealings with who reside there as well. And, and that is why I was thinking, bringing this up as a idea and a possible goal in the future. Something I could ask you, what holdings you have, what holdings you don't. If I were to, now, Kiv has most that information, so I mean, you can discuss with her. I just, I have very few holdings here in town, you know, minus the uh, apartments in which I do own, uh, or the club in which I own. And I think there, well, there, there's a warehouse, you know, that I have for shipping and such. That is, oh, say shipping. Uh, it's, I, I say shipping as a uh, uh, GM and looking at the import map. export. Mm. Yes, it deals with. Uh, Illegal goods, artifacts, and other things come through that warehouse. Uh, it's near the airport, so it's, you know, it's connected with customs. It's a legit business, so as long as it doesn't involve any of those particular businesses, or that I don't wake up one evening and have a group of Russians trying to storm our you know, home, then we'll be fine. And that is why I expected them to just bring them in and try and be giving the leader advice from the shadows. Where to go, where not to go. See, what which, places are Russian. But like I said, if you wish to do this or take this endeavor on in your, uh, on your own with your assistance from those that are here, um, more power to you. It is up to you. I am not going to tell you no. I am not your father, if you will, or your keeper. I am just the man that you work for, and whoever works for you, that is your business. Speaking of uh, Russians coming up on a date, I notice extra security. Are we well, I mean, no. Future guests. We're we're fine. Um, it's just a matter of the fact that you know we're all here now. Uh, uh, I yes. figured. Uh, Remember, the security staff was already higher, they just weren't on the job yet. Uh, once we have established ourselves here, you know, they were put on the job. Yes. I wasn't sure if we had any company that's... No, no, no company at all. Just a matter of personal security to keep up pretenses. You know as well as I do that none of the Models out there would have a very fine job of keeping any of our kindred out. And, of course, there's not very few mortals out there that would be able to handle a kindred themselves. So, it's more of a pretense for the locals to go, Oh, hey, look, somebody's important there, and they have high-end security. Plus, you mm. know, there is the art collection that's in the other wing that I've been collecting for a while, and I don't want to see any fools show up and try to take it. Yeah, extra guns kind of hinders that idea. Yeah, I have seen that the architect around here doesn't stand up too well to our kind as well. well. So, uh, is there any other business that you would like to have? Um, not at this moment, if there's anything for you need of me. If not, I think... Uh, Evie might be up for a game of chess, perhaps. We did learn that where we currently are is roughly in the Russian mob's territory, as they tend to run all of East, uh, what's the name, uh, Cesar Chavez Street. Yes, that's about three blocks south of the apartments. Well, like I said, don't, uh, don't bring it home and you're fine. That is exactly my thought. Um, Kia, before you do leave, there is a yes. one more thing I must uh, 
discuss with you. Oops. Uh, uh, with him saying that, uh, Igor will bow out and leave the room, leaving the two of them. Alright. So, um, yes, you remember that Roman painting I was waiting on? Yes. It's uh, due to arrive uh, this evening at the airport. It should be going through customs, and we should have it in the morning. If um, you can make arrangements for it to be picked up and delivered, I would most appreciate that. Not a problem. I'll uh, head, up, head over there as soon as we get where it's cleared from customs. Now, you as uh, have been working for you know Chris for quite a while, um, yeah. you have picked up, uh, actually, why don't you give me, um, insight intelligence. Insight plus intelligence. Boom, boom, boom. Holy shit. <laughs> uh. Please tell me you want to use a willpower for that. Yes. Um, I can roll up to what, five? Or no, I only have three willpower left, so three. Yeah. You can roll up to three dice with one willpower. Oh, three dice for one willpower? How have yeah, you been you doing? I use one. Oh, okay. Yeah, one per check, so you only got one success. Yeah, one success. Only one. Um, Alright, so yeah, you're not... I mean, you've been collecting and picking up these different kind of artwork and painting for Kristoff for quite some time. But mm -hmm. you have not picked up anything beyond that. Mm -hmm. I didn't pry into Christoph's affairs. I just. So that's just the ask. Alright. Um, what the hell's going on here? Let's try this again, shall we? All right, so, Judd, you head out towards the pool, and I think I've shown you that picture before. Give me a minute, and I will show it to you again. I have to type in something right quick. I think he's on a call. Oh, I see that. My bad. Yeah. and to take a couple of guys with him to make sure the package is secured in the back of the SUV. And... Yes, ma'am. Is there anything else uh, you're going to need while I'm out? Um, no, not tonight, but I appreciate your help. Uh, and we'll s see you tomorrow. Uh, very well, ma'am. Have a good night. Good night. And then I'll saunter up to the pool see if Evie's walking around and, yeah. we'll get to that oh, cool. in just a moment um, let's see Igor what are you doing while he is giving marching orders to so I would have left and probably sat in the if there was a sitting room where people normally gather for a while, 
he would have gone in there to done some thinking, contemplating, planning, plotting, thinking of the future. Okay. So he's probably in the sitting room, living room, whatever you want to call it. Yes, there's already a nice fireplace going. It's just, it's like a, a study off from his study, you know, a little library that's not connected directly to his study. Yeah. All right. Sorry to hear that. All right, so before we get to um, Kiv making her way to the pool, we already have Judd out there at the pool. And when you get there, Judd, you uh, just shared a picture. Of what you know, you see her. Uh, yeah. She, yeah. At one point in time, she seems to be in the water. Oh. Another point in time. The name. Yeah, it's just you. Okay. an E, a V, not a D. Um, yeah. She just at one point in time, she's walking around the pool. You know, sauntering around the pool, just, you know, kind of... I'm just, I'm just going to go over to her and say, hi, I just wanted to introduce myself. Oh, my. You can see me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, not many of uh, those who come here happen to see me. Periodically they do, but not always. I'm no, sorry, I, I'm Evie, and... Oh, it's been something from when I was a kid. So. Well, my name's Evie. Uh, I'm Jude... Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Jude. Uh, you don't really know who runs the home now, uh, but I guess you'll... You, are you the new homeowner? Oh, no, no, no. I'm just staying here. Oh, well, welcome. I don't go very far. I spend most of my time here. It's a pleasure well, to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. No, I just saw you out here, and I just wanted to make sure I introduced myself. Just a polite thing to do. Well, very refreshing. Don't yes. don't get that too often. I mean, granted, uh, the young lady Kiv Kiv Kiv, mm -hmm. you know, she has a bit of an accent. And it's kind of hard to pick up on it. But um, yes, she spoke with me a few times. Actually, we play chess periodically. Granted, oh. she has to move the pieces for me, but well, no, I, I can understand that. You know, it. it with where you are now, it's hard to move things around. Yes. Yes, it is. I do miss drinking the drinks, but, eh, what can you say? Yes. Yes. I, I again, I understand. Yeah, there, there are many pleasures that kind of go the wayside after a while. Oh. <laughs> or, well, with what happens. You're telling me. Um, and she does some, like, a little coy shoulder move and a giggle. I mean, at least I can still dance. I just can't do other things I was good at. Ah. But you at least still have a nice place to do it. At least you're not caught up in some cemetery somewhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess it just has all to do with... I don't know how that works. Well, you probably died around here. Oh, well, yeah. I'm, from my understanding, I mean... Last I remember, when I was living, was <sighs> drinking the drink that uh, you know, this young man brought me, and next thing I know, I'm nobody sees me. I'm just walking around the pool. I see. It's one of those things. Yes. Well, sorry to hear that it went that way for you, but uh, it's still a pleasure to me. If you need somebody else to talk to. Uh, I hear you all. The, I mean, I can hear you all the time. So, give me a second. Checking on something. Nope, that's not how to do it. 
Uh, so as you're talking with her about this time, uh, Kiev comes walking up. And she waves at you and puts her hands back on her knee as she's, you know, kind of sitting sideways on one of the uh, chairs and talking to Judd. Ah, good evening, Evie. I see you've met Jude. Yes, yes he's a delightful fellow. Nice to know other people, you know, can see things like this. It can be a curse or a blessing. I don't know. Depends on the day, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you know, you probably didn't have to live with your grandfather for five, sorry, great-great-grandfather for uh, five decades. So, yeah. No. The men in my family tend to die young. Well, yeah. It wasn't for Christmas. long enough to reproduce. Yeah, so if it wasn't for Christoph, I'd probably have been dead along with him. Ah, I see. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you, Evie. And, uh, if you want to play chess or something, have fun tonight. Would you like to join us? Oh, no, I don't understand the game. Never played. Okay. Well, we could... Possibly play cards or something else. Oh no no no! You 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 go on and do your your thing for tonight. I I need have some thinking I need to do. There might be some okay. stuff in the library also. Oh, okay. Well, most time it's just Evie and I chit chatting. Like we do. I think it's kind of lonely for her and until you guys arrive. It was kind of lonely for me as well. Well, one night I'll come out and play cards with you. I at least know some of those. Very well. All right, so... Right. Um, you two have a good evening. So I'll just sit around with her for a little while. Yeah, uh, you guys will play some chess for a bit. Um, roll me a d20. All right, you uh, you guys play for several hours and you finally are able you finally beat her. Okay. Um, at one point in time throughout the night, you know she you know does some dancing to music that's not actually there. Um, uh, she pulls out what looks like a cigarette on a long stick at one point in time, and while she's chatting with you. That's about it. Uh, the rest of you guys just taking your time to think of your options as far as the new town is concerned? Well, since there are a couple of hours left, I was actually going to drive to a convenience store or something and pick up a couple maps of um, Austin. Yeah, easy enough. Yeah, and I know there were pins and stuff back at the place, though. Um, I'm basically going to be mapping out what I saw on our route, you know, right. like where the club is and where the apartments are and, you know, where I saw clusters of homeless people and stuff. I'm trying to learn a little bit about Austin from both a map view, but also when I can, the uh, street view. All right. So, yeah, no problems getting all that. So we'll just say you spend the rest of your night doing that. Um... And you guys will come to an end of your first night in the city of Austin. Okay. Only killed three people. Yeah, only three. I don't think you killed any of them. Well, I mean, us as a party. The girl killed three people. Us. Yeah, that's a party. You know, guilty by association there, Kiv. Exactly. You saw it happening. You didn't stop it. Well, no. But I clean up after. quite with the people. But I always clean up after the fact. Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. We're going ahead and going to allow our uh, undead here to rest for the day. And we'll pick this back up next Sunday. Um, that would be 2nd of January, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I have to double check. No, no, no. It's about the 1st of January. 
Is it? Yep. Because I'm due to go back to work on the 3rd, which I was assuming was a Monday. Yep. The 1st is a Sunday. Yep. 2nd is a Monday. So, New Year's Day. Um, Woo, party. Woo, yeah. So, uh, yeah, check back with us on Sunday for to find out exactly what route they're going um, in their new city. Since they're already making big plans of becoming, you know, the secret overlords of the city of Alston. Or at least one of them is. Uh, if you can't <laughs> wait... first day here, big plans. So if you can't wait till Sunday for your tabletop RPG fix, we will be back Wednesday. We just don't know exactly what the game is yet for some organized play. And uh, we should be back here Friday for some more Consequences of Chaos. As well as I'm still playing some more of that Midnight Sun, which... Uh, I will be streaming periodically through the week until I finish with it and jump into a new one. For those who have not played it, it is, can be very addictive. I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be as, as addictive as it is, but it has been pretty addictive. I've actually done some uh, goofing off offline that doesn't deal with the main story, so that you know, I'm not boring you with me running around the woods picking plants or searching for a cat that just doesn't seem to want to meow when I get close. Anyway, uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, we're in this adventure called Life Together, so please keep that golden rule in mind and treat those around you the way you would like to be treated yourself. And with that, have a good week. Later. Bye.